Hello, I'm Raf. I'm playing a Warforged Gloomforged named Styx. Uh, he is a paladin and uh, has been recently reawakened and is learning about the world around him with some new friends that he's just met. Hey everyone, I'm, I'm Jared. I, um, I'm playing the character of Luther. Uh, he's a Dampier. Uh, he is a fighter that specializes in firearms, a bit of an investigator, and I am the great, great, great uncle of uh, Grinner. Hi, I'm Jacob. I'm playing Tifla, the Goblin Ranger. Uh, she is a wonderful hunter and medical genius. Hi, I'm Haz. I'm playing uh, Theodore Ursa, the satyr druid, who's a kind of a, a charismatic druid who's unwillingly taken Tifla un under his under his wing as she's followed him through the, the forest for the past few months. Hi, my name is Josh. I am from the Roll Together RPG stream, and I will be playing Killian Maxwell, a half elf warlock who has come to Barovia. He was with the party previously but has lost them and has joined up with the Tempest on their adventures. G'day, I'm Tom. I'm playing Jonal, the Asimir wizard. Um, he is on the pursuit of good and evil, uh, finding out the best and worst in this world and he's doing that with a little bit of naivety and optimism. And I'm Owen, the dungeon master of our Curse of Strahd campaign. A warning, gentle viewer. Curse of Strahd is a horror-themed Dungeons & Dragons campaign, which means you may hear adult language or adult themes throughout this episode. Hello! Hello! hello, hello, hello. Welcome back, everybody, to our Curse of Strahd campaign and the Lost Archives. It is wonderful to have you join us once again for our premiere horror D&D campaign. We will be jumping into the action very, very shortly. Jacob's literally just peaced out. <laughs> it's incredible timing. Um, oh, he's back. No, no, he is, he's back. Amazing. Um, it is lovely to have you all join us once again. We are looking forward to a, uh, we had a little bit of a cliffhanger last session, which we are want to do with our uh, Curse of Strike campaign. So we will jump into that and I won't keep you waiting for too much longer. Um, I will apologize for the lack of sticks intro for the previous session. Uh, we, we, I don't know, we like went to record it and then there was a reason we didn't, but I can't remember what that reason was. Can you, Raph? I Why didn't we, we just got talking and then just Just went. didn't. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> if you're watching this on Twitch, unfortunately you will have seen the old Grinner uh, intro, but if you're watching this on YouTube or listening to this recorded, I've got some excellent news. It will be updated and you will have the correct version. Um, we will remember this time. We will remember this time. And um, if we have not, please feel free to let me know in the comments how this has emotionally and physically affected you, um, the lack of proper intro for, for Raph's new character. Um, Just like everything else Raph does. Mm, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Pretty much. <laughs> We, I was going to say, like, what, what's the next kind of, like, event coming up? Could we do, like, an Easter Blinsky special? It's not really a toy shop kind of tie-in. I feel like it's a bit of a stretch. What would be the next, like, toy shop episode that we could... Because we've done... We did Halloween. We did Christmas. What would be the next... Anzac? Easter? Yeah, I was wondering if Easter might be okay. What did you say, Has? <laughs> Anzac Day? Anzac Day. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> um... That might be a bit disrespectful <laughs> and confusing as most of our audience are not from Australia. And they're going, what the fox and Anzac? Do you mean like the biscuit? Um, and we will have to then explain yes. it. Yes. Yes. <laughs> it's the short story. Yes, like the biscuits. Um, yeah. And and um, probably for Josh's sake, we don't want to celebrate Britain's greatest military blunder to ever affect the Australian military. Um, that'd be a bit... Oh, we, do. <laughs> <laughs> we do. Yeah. We'll, yeah, Josh we'll... wasn't there. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> Neither were the British. Oh, just, um, <laughs> <laughs> so we will we'll, we'll come. I'll think of the next appropriate uh, toy shop episode, Blinsky toy shop episode. I, I do feel like we always want to go like bigger and better with each toy shop. So um, I've got a plan for the next one, but I don't have an event to like tie it in really nicely with. So we'll, we'll come up with something. I, I mean, Christmas in July seems really obvious, but also kind of boring. But uh, we'll have a think. If you've got any suggestions, Easter. Easter is super easy. You got the bunnies. Yeah. You got the chockies. Make a show day. You got Maisie Peters Echo in there. Echo Show Day. Echo Show Day is even more specifically Aussie. <laughs> <laughs> Chatter joining in with uh, fucking puns now. Don't go down that rabbit hole. Nice. Hey. <laughs> Thank you. Hey. Well That's done. Crazy. 
Um, yeah, look, maybe we should do an Easter one. Uh, obviously, actually, that's a good point. So is it next Monday is Easter Monday? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the first. Look, I'm, I'm still I'm still up for doing a Curse of Strahd session on Easter Monday if you guys are, because it's not like it's not like I'm going to be like going hard on Easter Monday celebrating in other ways or other formats. Like, Funny. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I, if, if we okay, done. I will I will have it. Our next episode will be oh god, don't don't help him, Brit. People might be hopping mad. Fuck. Hey. The puns. I, you get I real deep and be like a passion of the Blinsky and do do a. <laughs> Holy shit. <laughs> Grinner comes back to life. <laughs> <laughs> and on the third day. Yeah, what's up, fuckers? <laughs> Anyone got any ziggies? I'm out. As he comes back. Uh, yeah, look, we'll, we'll, we'll do it. Okay, done. I think if, if everyone's uh, happy to do a session on Easter Monday, let's, um, let's do it. Can I pitch a name for that episode? I feel like you're going to regardless of the permission granted to you, so... For sure. <laughs> you do, you Pikachu. I just think Macy Pieces has a song called Holy Revival that I think would be quite fitting for Easter <laughs> Monday. <laughs> it, it is quite fitting. <sighs> My urge to shut you down <laughs> is fighting with the understanding that that's not a bad name. <laughs> <laughs> I'll workshop it. Um, that is all the fun announcements I have to share. I guess we're doing a special, a Blinsky special next Monday, so stay tuned for that. Um, that'll be very exciting. I've uh, I've already done the expanded version of Blinsky's Toy Shop, because obviously each time you go back, it's got a new area that they can explore. Um, I've actually done the next three maps worth of expansion uh, after the Christmas special, because I knew that there would this would be an ongoing thing that we would have a lot of fun with. Um, so we'll, yeah, I, I'm excited to share the new maps as well as we start to move forward. Um, I think that's it for all the fun announcements, unless anyone else has got anything fun to share. Oh, Jared's not here. Jared's not here. Um, I know that's becoming a bit of a pattern, <laughs> but yeah, it's just part of the norm now. Fun announcement. Um, this is a fun announcement. So Jared was Jared was at work using a uh, a whipper snipper, or what? What would that be in other countries? He was weeding, wasn't he? Was he weeding? Yeah, he he bent down. down. He bent down, and that was so. Jared bent down and got, got like a. By a twig in his eye <laughs> that got via his sunglasses somehow i don't know i think it had no clip on or something and um it's uh, it's taken out a little chunk of his uh, his upper cornea the symptoms he described sound exactly to me like it's a, it's a partial um epithelium defect maybe just down below so he's got photophobia light sensitivity watery eyes and a headache um not a great combination for trying to uh, trying to play D and D. Obviously, the light sensitivity might be a bit of a problem when you're staring at a bright screen. So uh, Jared is taking the night off while his eye is patched and recovering. The good news is it only takes one to two days for the epithelium to regrow. So I'm looking forward to seeing him for the next episode, <laughs> or for uh, it should be a full recovery. Back full to recovery. 2020 vision, or whatever he has. Whatever he had beforehand. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, back to whatever he had before. <laughs> back to pre pre injury. Um, so podcast listeners, you will not hear Jared's dulcet tones as Luther. Um, I will be playing as Luther and for everyone else, um, pr pray for us because with Jared not here, uh, normally shenanigans tend to occur and, um, people die, people die. So let's do our recap and jump back into the session and, uh, not obviously characters die. We probably shouldn't say people die. I feel like that might be a bit intense. Well, I mean... <laughs> Let's do our recap and jump back into the session and we will uh, I will leave you hanging no longer. Our series has been following the adventures of the Tempest Adventurer Guild. Theo, Luther, Jonor, Grinner, Tithla, and newcomer Killian, an adventurer from a distant land. Having become trapped within the realm of Barovia while searching for some missing adventurers, the team have been travelling west in search of an escape. Seeking respite and healing at the Abbey of St. Markovia, the team have now been embroiled in a larger plot by the Abbot, a plot which requires the trade of Irina to Strad in exchange for escape from Barovia. Travelling to Vallaki in the dead of night, Theo and the Abbot were able to interrupt a ghostly intruder from taking Irina out into the mists. This chilling encounter helped to convince Irina to agree to the plan, and the trio decided to wait out the night before attempting to return to the Abbey. Meanwhile, Grinner headed off for a walk to clear his head, disappearing without a trace into the night. When Jonor and Killian followed the tracks up the mountainside, all they could find was some residual magic traces. However, Jonor's analysis of this was interrupted by Killian suddenly attacking him, goaded by his warlock patron to acquire the blood of a spellcaster. Immediately regretting the decision, uh, and his connection to the fiendish, fiendish entity momentarily weakened by Jonor's Asimar blood, 
Killian broke his warlock contract and destroyed the sword channeling the fiend's powers. This act partially restored some trust, Jonor deciding to accompany Killian back down to the monastery rather than pushing him off the side. Luther and Tithla, now aware of Gruner's absence, joined the search, but with no further clues revealing themselves and the hour growing later and later, the team eventually had to head to bed. Reunited with Theo in the morning, the abbot requested the group search the basement armory, fearing some form of retaliation from either Strahd or Sergei for stealing away Irina. Exploring the cellar, the team did locate many weapons and armor, as well as a strange warforged looking figure. Jonor, sensing some magic at work, offered the figure a soul coin. With a start, the figure awoke, introducing itself as Styx and offering to assist the party in return for providing him with power once more. Heading back upstairs, the abbot supervised the fortification and arming of the mongrel folk, briefly being fooled by Theo uh, into believing that Styx was a different construct the party had brought with them. As the fortifications were being finalized, Jonor spotted a figure making his way down the road toward the abbey clearly injured and constantly checking behind him. The figure was revealed to be Adrian, eldest son of Davian Martikov of the Wizard of Wine's vineyard. Adrian revealed the winery had been attacked during the night and that he had been sent to find the party to request their help by his father. Just as he was explaining this, a sudden screech interrupted his story and the party watched on as a dark shape dropped from the sky and slammed into the nearby road, throwing up a spray of dirt and gravel with the impact. That is where we left off last session. As you all stand behind the partial barricades that Styx had helped to create with the assistance of the mongrel folk, you watch as Adrian next to you stares through the gap in the fortifications and the barricades. The, the large harp that Styx had broken in half to uh, form the top of a barricade, providing a perfect archway framing this figure. As the dust begins to settle, you can see what almost appears like a humanoid figure. Tall, maybe seven foot, with large bat-like wings stretching behind it. Long claws hang down, the arms disproportionately long, almost dragging on the stone underneath it. And you can see that the legs themselves also appear to be disproportionately long, the creature quite lanky, the torso almost quite compacted almost looks like it's monochrome for a moment. There's no color to this creature. As the dust begins to settle, it looks like this creature is just in this gray scale. But as the dust slowly clears and the shadows begin to cast across it, you can see it is in fact made of stone. Cracks run up its body and you can see this almost angular head, lizard-like in appearance, slightly jutting jaw, horns curling back, cracks and chips missing from it. And as it shakes its wings, you can see that they are shrouded in these vines growing through the stonework, cutting across, piercing through parts of its body. And where the head and eyes are located, you can see that one half of the face has actually crumbled away, revealing this tight mesh of writhing green strands and tendrils. As the creature slowly begins to move around, its wings clicking into place, this almost grinding of stone on stone. You watch as it cocks its head, tilting, these one stone eye, this mass of writhing tentacles moving towards, locking with Adrian. And as it takes a shuddering step forward, you watch as this light, almost like stone-like dust, begins to drop from its body. You hear Adrian next to you. Oh my god, it's coming, it's coming quick. We, 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 I need to get behind you. We need to We need to attack this thing quickly. You need to destroy it. What would you guys like to do? Can I please roll for the fuck is that? You absolutely can. Um, I'm going to say a arcana or nature check, please, Sticks. Theo. You're muted, sorry, has. While Raph is doing that, um, I, being the diligent player that I am, actually read my abilities. Turns out Wild Shape is off a short rest. Would we have said I would have time in that last hour after getting the Bear Claws made to have had a short rest? Yeah, I my would God. say that. I would say that because I did describe over the course of about 20 to 30 minutes sticks destroying the upper levels of the monastery to make the barricades. 
I mean, during that time, Luther was uh, chatting to some of the other people there. I think Killian, you'd also had a bit of a chat to some of the mongrel folk. Theo, you went and investigated, but it was all very light activity. So I would say, yeah, you've had time for a short rest or some downtime during that period. Then I will be turning into a Bjornling and vaulting over that barricade. Brilliant. I will bring us across to a battle map in that case. And... Uh, Oh, and we <laughs> shall uh, we shall move across into the uh, into the battle map form. Now, let me just get this nicely centered. I had uh, some tech issues, issues, but it was a nineteen roll. Um, nineteen roll. Okay, brilliant. Uh, nineteen, and that was uh, what was that for specifically? What type of check? Uh, Arcana. Arcana. Sticks. While your memory is not fully recovered. You do still have parts of your database online, this kind of collection of knowledge that you instinctually seem to, to have access to. And as you observe this creature, something triggers, some memory triggers in your mind. You do recognize this creature. You've heard of gargoyles before, creatures of stone, sometimes manufactured, created, carved and, and animated with life, sometimes um, the result of accidental magic activation. Sometimes they are independent, able to move and operate without someone controlling them. Other times a wizard, warlock or artificer somewhere has, has animated these creatures, giving them life, giving them purpose. This one, however, looks very different. The vines that have broken through the stone that are seeming to, to animate this thing, you've never seen anything like this. And your database comes up with almost a little bit of like a, an error as you observe it an understanding that this isn't normal this is not what it should look like any other did you have any other questions around the arcana check um you would know that it is a construct not dissimilar to yourself actually given my knowledge of it being a construct and i guess just vague idea of how i operate would i have any concept of weaknesses this thing might have uh that's a good question you know that it is a physical creature it is it is physically in that in the in this body if you were to break the body enough it would destroy it if you could somehow disrupt the magic that's powering it if, if it is a true gargoyle one that's being um almost like controlled from remotely if you could somehow disrupt the magic break that connection uh you you could just basically turn it back into a statue again this one though looks different as i said you're not sure if the magic that normally empowers these is still in effect or whether there's something darker at play here very hard to say okay, okay. but i would i would say that i mean if you were to break its legs it's not going to be able to walk if you were to break its arms it's not going to be able to attack like it is still made of stone and you would also know that they can't repair themselves normally they can't so seems like a pretty good bet stick stick smash basically is i think the <laughs> the query return or like at the bottom you know, stick smash uh brilliant i've got us across on the battle map um feel free to quickly change your positions around i, I just copied your tokens across from when we uh, had you on a previous one you are currently in the courtyard of the monastery the main gates as you look out are positioned just in front of the well uh, i'm currently pinging it now so Please feel free to move your, your tokens around. The abbot moves towards just behind the, the well, looking out towards the front gates with the barricade. Actually, I will in fact open the doors because with the barricade in position. Um, Grinny, uh, I've just been given a, a token. token I've been given a token with Grinner's face <laughs> that just says dead. And I feel like that's a bit fucking rough. <laughs> <laughs> but also true. <laughs> um, I, that actually wasn't me, uh, <laughs> I, but I can't help but laugh at the person who did that. That is genuinely very funny. If that was you, please own up because that's hilarious. Maybe it was me and I've just forgotten. Surely yeah, it's I Jacob, right? Click on it. What was that? You can't click I can't on it. Click on it. It definitely wasn't me. Oh, maybe it was me then. Sorry if that was me. <laughs> 
I don't think it was though. Just, oh, I don't. Sure I don't remember doing God, this though. The guy who did that was so funny. <laughs> I feel like it was. It must have been Jacob. <laughs> I feel like I feel like I would remember doing that, but maybe not. Maybe I don't remember doing that. Um, that's okay. I'll I'll quickly uh, I'll quickly chuck you a new a new token. Riff. No, that's um, fine. Give me two seconds and I'll, I'll chuck it up for you because we do we do obviously have a new character out for you, which means you have a new token. Also, can I have summoned Dracob? Yes, of course you can. Absolutely. Um, while um, Theo drops into Bayonling form and, and vaults over the uh, over the barricades, can you each take me through what you would be doing at this point? Sort of like getting into position rather than jumping into initiative straight away. I kind of want to know what's your immediate reaction. Are you sort of like moving into into certain spots? Are you trying to? Um, get into position like what what's your current kind of like approach to this uh this creature moving towards you killian's feeling very weak at the moment uh still hasn't quite unlocked the new bits that he's got so being right next to adrian is gonna sort of put myself in front of them and sort of back up with them and trying to protect them absolutely as you move back into position with adrian you actually spent some time with Adrian at the Wizard of Wines Vineyard. He was the one that you walked around and, and helped with his patrol. I mean, you feel this hand on your shoulder as you move back, getting into a defensive position. And as you look up into his eyes, sorry, look down into his eyes, he looks up at you. You can see this, this fear in his eyes, but gratitude as well. This sense of, of yeah, very much uh, happy to have you nearby and happy to have you looking after him. Is he within the barricade now? Or is he still outside? Like, no, he's he's within the barricade. You guys got him through. Jonah kind of directed him through last session, so he's he is on the other side of the barricade with you guys. He's he's in a safe position, shall we say? Um, that's what that's what Killian's doing. Jonah, what would what would Jonah be doing? Um, he's still on the lookout for a walking grinner. So I reckon he's actually going to be towards the edge. I'm going to put him on the side somewhere. He's just peering over the edge, looking for grinner. Absolutely, or a variant form of him. A, ver- a variant form of Grinner. I like that as a as a as a style of Grinner. That's quite fun. And did you say the walking Grinner as a bit of a joke as well? I didn't, but that's a, that would have been a good one. I thought I, I thought I caught that. Um, Sticks. What would you be doing? Sticks was probably putting something on the barricade when all of this kicked off. Um, so he's just going to be. Uh, he'll be standing at the barricade. Um, with that check that I made to find out what this critter was, do I know if it if they're dangerous? Like, do they are they bad? Does it- uh, so yeah, I mean the ones that are uncontrolled, that are not so, so that they're, they're sort of like self animated and self self controlled. It's a, it's not that they're bad or good. They can be dangerous, definitely. Um, it's hard to kind of know what they want or what their goals are, but. Dangerous is the right word. Ones that are being controlled remotely by a wizard through an arcane link, whatever the wizard's goals are, it will follow. It will follow those instructions exactly. Um, Like, imagine a much more simple construct. Um, A much more simple version of yourself is the easiest way to describe it. It's it's a construct that will follow directions it's given. Um, Unable to kind of think creatively for itself. Those that are wild and have lost that programming or aren't being controlled tend to follow echoes of what that original programming was, what the original instructions were. Okay, cool. Thank you. I'll just stay at the barricade and and uh, pick up a stick or something so that I can throw it at it. <laughs> Sticks to do it. And uh, finally, Tithla. Yeah, so I think Tithla takes that time to summon Drake. Um, get ready and watch like find a point that she's got good line of sight on a lot of things for her boat perfect brilliant um luther is also going to move up next to you killian uh dropping down next to adrian pulling out his gun from the holster steering on either side and then slowly pulling it back into a into a position holding it ready to attack if this thing tries to breach through the barricades in front of you the abbot who has stepped up towards the well just behind Theo, um, looking around very, almost like concerned, as if expecting more. You can see him kind of like looking around, checking the sky as he sees this creature and sort of almost like examines it for a moment. You hear him mutter under his breath, uh, probably Tithla and Theo, you're probably the two closest. You would hear him mutter under his breath. 
Oh, this this can't be it. There must be more. There's more coming. This is not it. There is more danger here. No, no, no. And you can see him kind of like focusing on the sky, looking around, kind of losing it a little bit, like you had seen before. Alrighty. I'm and going to get... Totally I'm, I, I, tr- I trust him completely. He's, he's fine. He's proven himself a, a trustworthy fine. friend. Yeah, yeah. He's fine. Um, no, brilliant. No Alrighty. Could I get from each of you, if you could click on your tokens and please roll initiative. Um, I just want to have you kind of like in a, in a, a pretty easy to manage turn order, shall we say. Brilliant. Hmm. Oh, my entire screen is blank. Ah, oh, have I not given you vision? I cannot see. I haven't given you vision. Um, do you have dark vision? I'm just trying to remember if I gave the Gloom Forge dark vision. Oh, one eye vision. Ooh. Yeah, it'll be on your senses on the left hand side of your character sheet, just near your uh, stats. Oh. Uh, nope. So far, Tifla oh. has the highest roll within a level. There you go. You should be able to see now. If you. Uh... I can see now. <laughs> I can see. Brilliant. I clicked on my token, but for some reason, when I rolled initiative, it didn't add to the tracker. That's okay. I can I can add you on. What was your uh, what was your initiative, Killian? Thirteen. Thirteen for Killian. I'm not doing great. <laughs> <laughs> it's all right, guys. It's okay. Um, I'll roll for the Abbot two really quickly. Give me two seconds. And I also need to know which one of these mongrel folk specifically is Otto, so I know which one I did not let die. <laughs> oh, I can, yeah, Otto's actually, I will move Otto to position so that you can see him clearly. Um, yeah, if we can get really a name cool. tag on Otto, that'd be great. Definitely, you should absolutely have a name tag on Otto at all times, that's only fair. I don't ask for a lot. <laughs> you do though, you ask for a fair bit. No, those right. are demands, this is a request. Oh, okay. Um, <laughs> you should be able to now see Otto. I'm kind of disappointed that Otto doesn't have otter parts. I feel like that would have been... Yeah, I agree. Um, I, I'm happy to homebrew Otto differently to what the module says he looks like. Uh, I just was following the module on that one. Well, uh, and if I can get the goat smith, because I need to keep him alive too. I just remembered he was a... <laughs> <laughs> Which one? Sorry? Uh, he, he will He will not be joining the combat. He will be staying at the back, continuing to get the weapons and armor ready. You do not need to worry about goat smith. Do I have my bare hands for this fight at the last, last point? Yes, you, yeah, yeah, yeah. You got them all organized. Cool. I feel they did, and I don't know if you had time to add them to the Beyondling. So it's it's a separate Beyondling um, stat box, but I couldn't get it to roll properly, so I haven't had a chance to play around with it perfectly. But what you'll do is just roll an extra d6 whenever you do your bear claw attack. Can't do. Nice and easy. Uh, all righty, our initiative in order. We have the mm-hmm. Abbot on 19, Killian on 13, Tithla on 11, Theo on 9, Jonor on 8. Oh, did my one not come through? Uh, it did not. That's okay. I'll add you right now. What was your six? It was 11 also. 11 also. What's your uh, dexterity? Right. My dex is uh, 13. 13. Okay. 18. So, yeah. Tith will Ooh. definitely be going first. Let me just rearrange that really quickly. There we go. Uh, and finally, the gargoyle. Uh, that's atrocious. 20. Sorry, guys. We're starting off in a... <laughs> They're stone. They don't really move all that much. So that's fine. I know. They have a plus zero to their uh, to their rolls. That was a natural 20 on the initiative. That's right. So were you allowing me to start outside the barricade with my vault? Yes. Over yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? Definitely. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Because that was your sort of positioning was to jump over the barricades. Um, sure. Theo. Fucked up. Absolutely. Uh, as you vault over the barricades, Theo, you watch as this creature steps towards you. And as it raises back an arm to attack, you watch as the arm drops off to the ground, followed by the wings and the body as it tumbles apart into pieces. For a moment, it seems like this creature was just maybe holding itself together as it just crumbles apart. But then suddenly you watch as the parts begin to shake a little bit and move. And as the stone breaks and twists, the vines bursting free, reshaping the stone into a myriad of these shapes, the fragments of stone being pulled together to form almost what look like bodies, arms, legs, these angular heads made of shattered stone. Four of these creatures, assembled from the broken apart body of the gargoyle, rush towards you. Uh, Two of them are going to rush up the sides of the walls, 
uh, avoiding you entirely, almost completely ignoring you as their stony, like sharp stony claws smash into the stone, allowing them to climb very, very quickly. Uh, two of them, though, will be rushing towards you, Theo. As they rush up and begin striking towards you, does a uh, unnatural 20 hit you? Yeah. And 15 is the AC in bear form. Uh, the next one I was going to say is a 15, so that is going to hit as well. Let's do some uh, damage. Four. Uh, fuck you, that is. It's like, oh, it's not a natural 20, but does that hit? Just, I'm just making sure for anyone like keeping keeping stats or like caring about that sort of stuff that I say it accurately. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you just want it on record. It's like, hey, your AC is not stupid high, right? <laughs> <laughs> Four points of piercing damage from the bite. Seven points of slashing damage from the claws as the first one attacks you, Theo. The second one immediately comes in ready to strike once again. Uh, does a... Uh, 17 and it okay 17 hits 14 does not though yeah uh, that is going to be eight points of piercing damage as the second this like and, and you can see these aren't really gargoyles anymore imagine a statue shattered into pieces suddenly bound together by these lengths of almost like green vines holding the shattered shards into these very angular um, sharp shapes and as they go to bite down it's more just a collection of loose stones bound by vines slamming into you cutting through your flesh Theo cutting through the fur of the Bayornling whose form you now inhabit uh, the two that were rushing over the walls begin to basically rush up into position and then drop down on the other side they do use their full turn to do this that's an action dash to rush up and over the walls um, Killian and oh, sorry Luther should be back here let me just move, sorry, Killian and Luther should be down here because you guys have moved back into position to keep Adrian safe. Um, as it drops down next to Tithla and Dracob, the other one engaging with the mongrel folk. And the mongrel folk for their initiative are going to rush forwards and engage the one on the top right-hand corner. The abbot's still looking a bit out of it at this point. Next up in the initiative uh, is the abbot. The abbot at this point strides forward, ignoring these creatures. And as he moves up next to the well and stares through the gap towards these creatures attacking you, Theo, he looks confused and, and lost. Shaking his head, he turns his attention back towards the sky and begins muttering a spell under his breath. You watch as glyphs appear in the air around him, carving themselves this sort of like red angular text flowing from his fingers, very unlike the divine magic you've seen him cast before. And as he finishes the spell and fires it upwards, you watch as this pulse of red light shines out from him, his eyes briefly glowing red for a moment before the spell fades. And as his eyes look around, you can see his pupils are now dark red. He seems to be focusing, looking around, this light almost shining from behind his eyes as he casts some form of corrupted spell. Uh, I rolled to see if his spell worked. It did not. <laughs> As before, nothing to read into here. Abbot's all about board boys. Don't, don't, don't worry. <laughs> we know the Abbot's fine. Uh, next up in the initiative order is Killian on 13. Killian, it's your turn. I am just going to sort of have one hand out trying to protect uh, Adrian. I'm not armoured. I didn't put my armour on because I'm still injured. Yeah. <laughs> it's healed a little bit, but I'm still, I can't put the armour on. So I'm unarmoured. I've got some sort of strange rapier in my hand that's got a weird look to it and I'm just trying to protect Adrian that's if I have to, I'll take the dodge action um and protect <laughs> that's that's what no, no, no. So, so you can like stand in front of him take the dodge action do you want to also quickly roll me an intimidation check please Killian just to kind of like draw the attention of creatures that might be making their way towards Adrian you're kind of like trying to trying to intersperse nine. yourself nine I mean it, it's not that you're <laughs> the, the problem is right it's not that you're not intimidating it's that you're very injured and you standing in a defensive position in front of adrian you do look like a weak target but also so does adrian and the two of you <laughs> together so injured as you are kind of look like a, an easy meal together rather than you trying to like draw attention away from adrian um you're not sure how effective your taunting let's say <laughs> is going to be for this <laughs> Um, but Killian, you may absolutely take the dodge action. Any bonus actions on your turn? Uh, no, I've got nothing else. Easy peasy. Next what can up. you do right now? Nothing. I have no magic. 
Not a, no, 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 not a smidge. Not even that level of cleric you had. Nope. I've, 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 uh, I've cornered that. I've sort of cut myself off from the cleric magic until everything else rolls in. Oh, sweet. Good. Good to know. Killian, Killian essentially is a commoner uh, until <laughs> he is able to, to finish the oath that he is, uh, he has started to make. Uh, I'm protecting. You are protecting. This is very, very That's true. My oath. This is very true. Um, we will we will actually i was gonna get i was gonna do this at the end of the round but i do kind of like this flowing on from your turn could you please roll me a d100 killian oh you certainly can Dundred. i love a good dundred do, 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 do. that is a two nice that is very unlikely um <laughs> killian it's as likely as any other number it's true. <laughs> <laughs> it's true it's a good point i guess just like how low it is it's just still only 50 percent high or low depending on where you distinguish high and low but yeah it's just yeah, it's a very a low 50, number 50 chance of getting a two when you roll a d100 there you go that's, that's exactly not... right yeah wait exactly right <laughs> hang on a minute it's a 50 50 chance uh... <laughs> he's got you there he has got you there i don't think he does though um but i can't be bothered that's explaining the physics wrong. the uh, the probability and mathematics behind why um killian despite this living up to your vows living up to your promise taking on the responsibility that you swore that you would the sword in your hands doesn't seem to glow any brighter there's no sudden change there's no feeling of of empowerment if anything as you stare down these creatures that immediately begin mowing into the uh, mongrel folk there's a sudden distinct impression that you might be in a bit of danger I'm in danger. <laughs> I'm not in danger. Mowing down the poor mongrel folk. I like those guys. Yeah, sticks. Your turn. <laughs> oh, um, they haven't. They haven't started killing them yet. But the one that's leapt off the walls has basically made a beeline for the mongrel folk on the north uh, eastern side of the the courtyard, and you can see the mongrel folk like getting ready to attack this thing. And there's there's a knowledge deep within you, a passive insight, shall we say that really they're kind of fucked. <laughs> Styx. Um, oh, all right. Styx is going to look down at themselves and, and realize that they don't have a weapon. Um, mm-hmm. And seeing the um, rock boy running at poor old Bitsa boy, um, I will cast Sanctuary on the, the Mongol folk that the, the gargoyle seems to be heading towards. Absolutely. Absolutely. As, what does the spell look like? This is the first time we're seeing Styx cast some magic. Um, it, is, it is willing, so it automatically fails this and, and, and the Sanctuary goes. So, yeah. Good. Uh, it's, it's interesting because there's almost like... You hear whirring and internalized kind of mechanized things going on, and then there's almost like a this black, weirdly viscous cloud that comes out almost like a fog from internal parts, uh, and then that manifests and channels almost as like a greasy... If, if oil could become a fog... That's what it would be like, and it's just going to shoot at um, the mongrel folk. It's a sticks. part of the sanctuary. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. It's it's funny because like I was going to describe this as like almost like a light from within shining around, sort of like harking back to the origins of sticks, Raph. If you remember, somehow you've gone the complete opposite of what I was envisioning, and so you watch the sticks farts out a cloud that surrounds <laughs> the mongrel folk. Shoots shoots a greasy load around the mongrel folk and described um, <laughs> just like that. I shot my greasy load <laughs> <laughs> and seems to provide some protection to this mongrel folk. <laughs> um, God damn it! That's what you Can get. I go home now. <laughs> <laughs> you I'm are home, and I want to go home. <laughs> you are home. Um, anything else on your turn, sticks? That is an action. You still have your bonus action and movement if you would like to spend. Them. Oh, not after that deplorable depiction. Um, <laughs> this is I... your description. All I did was just make it more succinct. <laughs> mm. uh, I don't know if I agree with that. I'm going <laughs> to, um, I guess, pick up a, a chair leg or something and climb over the um, the barricade and stand next to Theo. 
Yes. Can you add a club to your inventory? For the purposes of this encounter, the chair leg will be a club for you. Yeah. Alrighty. Next up in the initiative is the one, the only Tithla, who should have technically been before Sticks, but it looks like it rearranged it for some reason. But that's okay. I'll fix it up for the next one. Um, so Drake will be red. I just forgot to clarify that earlier. Cool. Anyway. That's fine. Fire one. We're cold at the minute. It's snowy. That's yeah. right. Um, Tithla's going to hide, uh, going to disengage from the gargoyle as a bonus action. Uh, hide behind Drake and take a couple of pot shots at the gargoyle in front of her. Brilliant. And does the doesn't that one hit? <laughs> let me let me just check the AC. Let me check the AC. Yeah. Uh, oh, do you know what? It's just a miss. So close, damn. So what close. about a twenty-three on the second attack? Twenty-three does hit, but we need to deal with the natural one first. No, nah, we'll just go past it. Uh, I don't What's think we need to directly in front of Tithla. What was that? Sorry. I'm sorry. Who's fucking side are you on? <laughs> <laughs> Chaos is the is the answer to that question. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Tisla, um, could I get you to please roll me a d100? Fine. Just want to see how bad the nat one is. Nineteen. That's fine. That's good. Nineteen. Um, and you're shooting with a short bow. Long bow. Long bow. For anyone else, it'd be a short bow. For Tisla, it's a long bow. As yeah. you as you draw back on the fletching, getting the arrow into position and release, the arrow immediately drops down and strikes into excuse, excuse me the soil at your feet. The bowstring in your hands, letting off this awful twang, and you hear this crack from your bow. As That's you look at the wood, you can see a large crack has formed in the wood itself. It looks like it is still a usable bow, but if there was any more damage taken by this. You suspect it might be unable to function as a as a weapon until it is repaired. Uh, all right. Twenty three does hit. Would you like to roll me some damage? Knowing that, can I retract that second attack? <laughs> oh, it's just if it takes more damage. The bow, like if you use the bow as normal, it's not gonna it's not gonna break in your hands. It's more like okay. if you roll another natural one and you roll poorly, you your bow might be in trouble. Is essentially okay. the message. I'm, I'm sort of subtly trying to trying to get across well i'm not good and at failing subtlety, it. okay I've, i'm noticing <laughs> <laughs> all right so the 23 to hit works 23 works that is a nine points of damage and with that Jacob will infuse that for an extra 1d6 of fire damage so it's another five fire damage whether that helps or not five fire damage does indeed help as the arrow pierces into this creature it doesn't really strike the stone you watch as it kind of deflects off the stone and embeds itself into the vine-like protrusions holding this creature together as it does so the flames begin to ignite the vines themselves you hear this kind of screeching cry as you watch the vines almost pull away and retract there's a moment as this creature shudders and then pulls itself into a single almost like stone brick the vines cutting off the oxygen to the fire by turtling with the stone pulled in around it. And as it retracts, it looks like this thing has kind of pulled itself back into its shell, the stone forming a, a wall or barrier around it. But it does look like that did some damage. Uh, anything else on your turn? <clears throat> no, that's all we've got. Thank you very much. That's all she wrote. Theodore. Alrighty. It'll be bonus action cocaine bearing. With a huge, huge roar, these things have come up in, into the abbey, potentially as some agent of evil druidry. Theo's pissed, getting angry, bjorling roar, and now I'm just going to start laying into the the one um, furthest away from from sticks. Brilliant. Would you like to roll me some attacks? All right, well, we'll go the claws first. Nineteen That's hit. It. That's a hefty mouse press. 19 does indeed hit. And um, that's with the claws, so that'll be with the extra d6. d6, so would you like to roll me a d6? A big One. <laughs> 13 damage. Ah. As as you slam your claws across these stone creatures, Theo, even with the metal attachments to your paws, you know this should be doing some, some significant damage, but the stone seems to be highly resistant 
to slashing damage. And as you strike across, it doesn't seem to do as much as you were hoping. Fair enough. Um, well then, seeing that, um, would my the force of it have opened up any of those plates on there to reveal some of those vines within? Yeah, as, as it slashes down and strikes into the uh, into the body, you can see that the damage and the momentum kind of pushes aside some of these stone plates, revealing the writhing mass of vines trying to hold this thing desperately together. Then I will snap my jaws into that and try and, and try and lash my jaws under some of the vines instead of the, the harder exterior. Brilliant. Could you please make me an attack roll for a bite, which is piercing damage, if I remember correctly, for the bite? There's a nat one hit. <laughs> I don't need to check it. I just checked this for Tithler. <laughs> um, I, I roll yeah. a one on the on the roll and a one on the damage. <laughs> as a point. Wow. That's, as you, stats, that's actually unlikely. That's actually... Inst- <laughs> Thank you for that. Uh, would you like to roll me a d100, please? As you go to strike against this thing, Theo, trying to bite down and, and break this, there's a sudden moment of fear. As you push your head towards the center of this mass, you can see the stones around begin to retract, almost trapping your muzzle within. Luckily, however, you are able to react at the last second with a 53 and just pull your head out of this almost like cutting zone of sharp stones. Indiana Jones. Indiana Jones, yeah. Anything else on your turn, Theo? No, it's my bonus action to rage and then... That the attacks is all she wrote. Um, but yes. if, I mean, if I could, without you know, moving out of their their range, just position myself as a more of a block to stop them from getting any further. Yeah, for sure. As you kind of like yeah. rear up on your hind paws, your deer hind hind yeah, legs. Hackles are up. Hackles are up. Bear claws out, swishing through the air with this like almost like a hiss as the metal creates this like moment of resistance, uh, allowing for your your bear claw attacks to have a bit of a sound effect as well now um yeah i mean in disposing yourself in the entrance to the abbey you are definitely making yourself a really good uh stop for these creatures trying to push their way in jonor jonor sees this gargoyle that has climbed its way over and is threatening uh tithla and dracob he starts to say a few uh a few enchanting words or he starts to turn some air twisting around him. His arms come out in front of him in sort of a twisting of air that only uh, Killian would have seen earlier the night before. Um, Jonor starts to have some air sort of compressed towards him into sort of a ball that's forming right in front of his hands. And he's trying to suck all this air and compress it into one like capsule, like a balloon full of very dense, like compressed air. He's going to then begin trying to pull the gargoyle towards him with uh, some telekinesis um, to try and shove him away from, um, or pull him away from uh, Draco. Alrighty. I need to make a strength saving throw, correct? Yeah, yeah. I guess the 15. 15. Let's have a quick look. That's going to be a five. Well, he, um, <clears throat> with this, like, air that he's pulling down, he's trying to, like, shove the gargoyle towards him, or pull him towards him, and that is tying into the next spell he's going to cast, um, which is Shatter. This ball of the energy he's uh, gathered in front of him, he's then going to point at the gargoyle, reach into his pocket with and collect some rock he's collected, and shatter the rock in his hand and that compressed air that's been forming around him plants behind the gargoyle and just erupts in a huge thunderous boom. I just have to double check the mage hand pull, the telekinesis, that's bonus action? Bonus action, yeah. Sick. Roll me a shatter. I believe it's a con save for this creature. Ooh, I think it's just straight damage for this. I'm not sure if it does anything else. Oh, look. hang on. I think it is, yeah, but... made of inorganic. It is made of inorganic. Saving throw. Yeah. Disadvantage on con save, right? That's right. Brilliant. Easy 15. Oh, <laughs> the first roll was a natural 20. The second roll was an 8. Very good. That's unlikely. 
Jonor. <laughs> it's going to be a theme time, isn't it? Fifty chance. <laughs> Jonor, uh, with Shatter, yeah. does it do? Ex- Let me just quickly double check. I think it does extra damage if it's against a. Um, I think it does extra damage if it's if it's against. Um, like, how inorganic creature. is it by like percentage? Like the vines aren't inorganic. Like, is it greater than fifty percent inorganic? Uh, it's a hundred percent. It's it's a hundred percent inorganic. The the stone, the vines aren't though. The vines, which are kind of calling it together. I'm gonna say that it doesn't do any extra damage for for inorganic. But yeah, the disadvantage definitely applies. Um, Jonor, mm. nine points of uh, of thunder damage. Oh, yes, thunder damage, amazing. As you let loose this almost like sonic blast, this explosion of of sound radiates from you. You watch as the gargoyle, this sort of like stone creature comprised of the shattered remains of a gargoyle, being dragged towards you, its attention still focused on Dracob and Tithler. As this blast of thunderous energy crashes through it, you watch as large chunks of the stone just explode off it, broken, shattered into pieces as it takes that full damage plus a little bit extra. And uh, with that... He's going to sort of duck behind his coat to get all the debris that flying off him. And then he's going to uh, make his way a little bit further away from the gargoyle who's probably pissed off. And Brilliant. he just scoots on down. Uh, I think I'm probably within range of him there, to be fair. Uh, yeah, you would have been within range. So it will get an attack of opportunity. Because ha- actually, yep. sorry, how, how far can it, how far can you pull telekinetically? I moved it. How many feet? Five then no, sorry, it would actually be here and you would still be safe. So I moved it 10 feet because I, I thought it was 10 feet that you could move it with uh, telekinetic. But no, if it's only five foot, then no, it's not within range of you. As you as you rush and move away, the creature is unable to follow. Uh, brave the, Sir Jonor runs away. Brave Sir Jonor runs away. At the end of the initiative round, something special happens. But before that does, I am pleased to welcome, joining us despite missing one eye, Luther. Jared is here. We can hear him now. I'm, I'm here. Can everyone hear me? We yes, can. can hear you perfectly. Yeah. Um, perfect timing. We're about to go to the top of the initiative round, which means you'll be straight back in with a 22 at the top of the round. Your first initiative, I had you rush back to Adrian, essentially standing guard with Killian, trying to protect him, taking pot shots at these creatures as they as they attempt to come closer. But we'll be able to hand that back over to you because you did that as Killian was doing it at the same time. Yep, no, perfect. At the end of the round, though, you watch... Actually, yeah, Jared, thank you for joining us. Could I get you to please roll me a D20? Just a flat D20. 10. Okay. One, two, three, six. Okay. Uh, The gargoyle that is at the very northeastern section, the one that had crawled down the wall, rather than attacking and, and savaging the mongrel folk, you watch as it slams itself into the stone wall, the vines pulsing from its body as they grow into the stone. And then as it pulls itself free, it seems a little bit smaller for a moment. And then pulling itself free of the wall, you watch as another one of these shattered stone creatures, the vines growing from it, tears itself out of the stone wall. Uh, at the top of the round, Luther, it is your go. That's a fun um. <laughs> okay. might, being in a stone stone walled environment might not be the best place to face off against these creatures um, like we had a choice I know did this. <laughs> I did yeah. I did and this is a, this, I seem dumb yeah the, be- the best bit is this is a homebrew creature you never could have predicted this it didn't exist before this <laughs> so uh, you, buddy? Yeah. <laughs> this is this is a special type of uh, of blight created just for this encounter yeah <laughs> a special type of blight Yep. Yep. You're a special type of blight. I am. Oh! I am. I'm a narrative blight and uh, a fun <laughs> blight. Uh, yeah. No. This is this is a stone blight. These are a, a special type of blight created by the druids of Yesterhill. Yeah, I'm gonna be slapping down them. Yum. Yum. <laughs> Yummy yummers. <laughs> Luther, it is your turn. Okay. So obviously, so the we're being we actually got attacked. I can see that now. The gargoyles, or not? They say so. Gargoyles, a, so a single so large fight. gargoyle landed outside the gates, and then right as Theo went to rush and, and defeat it, it kind of split into all of these like shattered stone parts, and then 
you guys watched as vines pulled themselves free of the stonework and began to reassemble it in these sort of bizarre shapes. Imagine like a stone statue shattered into pieces, pulled back into these random shapes, forming this very angular, almost insect-like looking creature animated by these green uh, vines and tendrils. Yeah, cool, cool. <laughs> I had a lot well, of fun anyway, with this creature. Um, what I'm going to do is, so I take it these guys are the mongrel folk. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Anyone not named as a mongrel folk, uh, the abbot is currently standing close to the well. Um, it looks like he's just cast some sort of spell that allows him to see things that uh, might be harder for the average person to see, but the spell looks like it's not working as uh, potentially advertised, given that his eyes are now glowing a soft red, and the normal divine magic you see him using is, is currently sort of going a bit out of control around him. Um, I've also put Otto on the map behind the well because uh, Haz really wanted to make sure he knew which mongrel folk was Otto to protect him. Okay. Well, first things first, I'm going to run up. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to sort of put myself between this gargoyle yeah. and Jonor. Um, I'm going to grab my pistolet and I'm going to, um, yeah, just put some shots into this creature in front of me. Brilliant. As you do that, I'll quickly move some of the mongrel folk around. Um, those who are standing there, actually, one of those rushes inside. One of them rushes back to Jonor, pulling out a small crossbow. Uh, one of them rushes up over next to Tithla and the well, making sure that that's covered. Another one over here. And the rest of these ones rush up and begin to attack these ones up here. Cool. All right, I'll do some attacks. Brilliant. Uh, 25 to hit. 25 hits, 12, 12 piercing, piercing damage. damage. And whatever other, because I, I, I remember um, my gun and bullets are powered up at the moment, so I'm not sure what that actually entails. Yeah, so with the with the holy energy, you get the sense that if this was an undead or maybe a fiend, this would be doing some serious heavy hitting damage. These aren't that. You guys were kind of yeah, preparing for some sort of fiendish encounter. I mean, the abbot was convinced that there would be some sort of undead or fiendish encounter coming to try and get revenge for you guys stealing Irina away. This was not expected. Yeah, right. Oh, all well, good. I'm going to do another pistol shot in this one. That's a crit. Natural 20. Brilliant. So that's going to be 7 damage uh, plus, plus an additional 10. Seven, so that's going to be 17. 17. Uh, Luther, that is exactly lethal. Oh How do you God. want to do this? <laughs> um, so you say it has vines. <clears throat> the vines is is that what's giving it life? It certainly appears that way. Yeah. Okay. Well, I'm definitely gonna. I feel like just shooting into the stone doesn't make sense. So I'm gonna aim for those speci like specific um, strands of vine that are sort of maybe keeping it all together. I'm not sure, but. I'm going to hit it. Uh, I'm taking it. That's their it's pressure point. So I'm going to shoot at those vines. Brilliant. As the shot rings out, the crack of the pistol, <sighs> the acrid smell of black smoke kind of like drifting across your face, Jonor, as it the wind kind of pushes it back towards you. Luther standing there, arm outstretched, pistol in one hand, coat sort of like fluttering in the breeze. You watch as this tiny bullet strikes through the creature and it doesn't seem to stop, doesn't seem to be even be affected until suddenly he watches a section of stone on top slowly slides, dropping off and clashing against the ground. Like a dam suddenly falling apart, the rushing water behind it, you watch as one by one, quicker and quicker, this creature falls into pieces, the vines falling limp and lifeless as it just tumbles apart, the broken sections of stone scattering on the ground. Brilliant. Very nicely done. Anything else on your turn, Luther? Um, I just want to see how much I moved. Twenty-five. I have ten more feet of movement, so I'm going to push up to the gargoyle and start getting a bit. Like now that Jonor's into the safety, I'm going to try and rush up and start supporting the other members of the team that are a bit further up in the thick of it. Um, just want to see if there's anything I can do. Not, nah, not really right now. Alrighty. I'm going, to, I'm going to leave it at that for now until I get a bit closer. Alrighty. Next up are the gargoyles. The two that were up in the northeast attacking the mongrel folk um, continue to assail them. You watch as one of the mongrel folk goes down. 
uh, a large, almost like dog-like looking mongrel folk with the hind legs of a cow, one massive kind of like bovine ear and a large ram's horn pushing up over the top of his head. You watch as this stone creature just slams this chunk of rock through his chest and as it pulls free, blood staining this sort of like dark gray slate-like stone, the mongrel folk just drops dead in an instant. As the vines drink of the blood, you watch as they begin to pulse this dark red. Uh, the mongrel folk that are at the front with you, Theo, they are both going to make attacks again. One of them is actually going to move up onto the barricade um, so that it can attack both you and looking down, see this construct in front of it, this skeleton, creepy looking construct that just farted out a cloud. Um, and it is going to make an attack. Uh, the mongrel folk that you had cast Sanctuary on sticks is safe. You watch as the, the creatures try to attack and, and fail, unable to strike through. That's why only one mongrel folk goes down. Uh, I also rolled about 20. What was that, sorry? Well, no, unfor unfortunately not. He, he moved from here to five feet, yeah. so he's still within the range, unfortunately. Um, all righty, let's see some attacks. Uh, let's do these. All righty. Uh, oh, shit. Okay. Um, seven doesn't hit you, Theo. No. Does a 17? Yes. Okay, 17 is going to be the uh, bite attack against you. That is going to be... Uh, oh, it's going to be three points of uh, piercing damage. <laughs> I rolled now a one. I'm raging. I rolled a one. One point of piercing damage. Um, sticks. Uh, natural 20 for a 24 on the claw attack from this creature. That'll get me. Followed by a 19 on the bite attack. That too will get me. Uh, sticks. The claw attack is going to be... Um, oh, fuck. That's going to be 14 points of slashing damage. Yeah. And for the bite, it's going to be 7 points of piercing damage. As this stony construct rushes you, Sticks, and slams into you, it's moving so quickly and so... I'd say kind of like unexpectedly. You can see it's kind of got this jittery motion that doesn't follow normal organic rules. It seems to sort of move in these stop starts as if it's kind of like lagging almost. And as it rushes up and strikes at you with the stone, you're unable to get any kind of defense set up in time. And as it smashes through, you feel this deep chill within you as the creature slams into you twice, unable to drain your blood, but taking something else from you instead. Uh, that is going to be those ones. Um, the one that only did three damage to you, Theo, um, you don't need to worry about that effect because it did not pass the damage threshold. So that's why you do not have any weird blood stuff happen. That's the good. abbot. You watch as the abbot kind of looking around with these glowing red eyes pauses for a moment as he stares almost directly at you, Theo. <sighs> I see you, deceiver. I cast you down and smite you. And as he points out a finger, you watch as this blast of lightning flies out from his hands. For a moment, Theo, you know this is going to hit you. This He has turned on you finally. But it doesn't. The lightning passes straight next to you, slamming into something invisible close by, something that had been sneaking up on you. Just past the gargoyle, moving towards the barricade, you watch as this shadowy figure, a mass of what almost looks like vines surrounding a, a humanoid figure. As the lightning strikes, the humanoid figure is blasted backwards out of the vines. The vines forming this like shadow, almost like invisibility around him, shattering into pieces as a man dressed in ragged robes, antlers attached to his head, uh, via a hood that he has holding up, a large staff in his hands is sent flying backwards, smashing into the ground and tumbling head over heels as you see what looks like a corrupted druid suddenly no longer invisible uh, as the abbot reveals them. Uh, that is the abbot's turn. Luther, it is I'll your... Go for a second, well, I've though. got Luther twice. Killian, it is your go. Or is add Luther twice on the initiative? <laughs> Uh, I would like to continue moving away with Adrian, hopefully trying to get into the Abbey itself. 
Oh, 100%. As you, as you drag Adrian by the collar, right next to Jonor is an entrance to uh, the, essentially the dining hall where you guys had kind of like walked through before. Um, if you were to try and cross the entire area back towards the hospital, you're going to be putting yourself in danger. But this area right here, just towards the southwest... I'm going to head towards that, and I think uh, un- unnaturally, um, the sword begins to shimmer, and then just almost explodes into dust, and the dust begins to reform around Killian's um, arm and forearm, if you allow, and it turns into a shield instead. Absolutely, Killian. As you essentially turn your packed weapon. Into a, into essentially like a packed shield, I would say in this case, transforming it from a blade into a uh, into a shield. There is a definite sense of approval in your mind. Could you please roll me another D one hundred? I can do. You uh, and screen. you and Adrian can absolutely get to the doorway, and you can push Adrian through the doorway, leaving you standing next to Jonor. Seventy two. Seventy two. Killian. You watch as. The light from your shield, the light it's casting. And actually, this kind of works. As you get closer and closer to Jonor, the shield begins to glow brighter and brighter. Jonor, you feel this pull, this connection for a moment to Killian. And as your eyes begin to glow with that soft, Asimar divine energy, Killian pushing Adrian through the doorway, getting him safe and slamming it behind and standing ready with a shield, sort of just glances to the side, noticing you. And for a moment, as your eyes lock, you see Killian's eyes flash with that same golden energy. Killian. For a brief moment, standing behind Jonor, looking at you, is a figure. It's so bright, the light surrounding them, that it's very hard to make out what this figure is. But you can see wings. This sense of calm serenity moves across you. And you hear in your mind, Dost thou agree to the bargain? Walk in the light, my child, and thou shalt be gifted with radiant light. I agree. Okay. Killian, you may replace your warlock levels with the celestial as your patron, and you may choose uh, the appearance of your celestial patron when you... Okay. Uh, f- feel like you were ready to design it i didn't want to give you what it looks like um it's up to you what it what, what you want it to look like but as you as you feel this agreement the pact made in your mind you watch as on the back of your hand the one holding the shield glowing in golden light a sigil begins to move across your hand the sigil of lythander or sorry in this world it'd be lysander sorry because it's the nostean one um even though your god would be Lysander, you've kind of pledged yourself to Jonor's god, so it is Lysander. Yeah. So yeah, as, as the symbol of a sun begins to etch itself in golden light on the back of your hand, forming a golden tattoo. Nice. Um, <laughs> I will have, I'll have a think about that, and then I will... The, it's an action to form the packed weapon, so yeah. I'm just in that room with Adrian, just making sure that there's... like keeping an eye on the windows, but staying near the door. Just uh, the, <laughs> does come through and they need to bolt back out <laughs> as, as you push Adrian, Adrian through you can see as he turns around a mongrel folk standing right behind you um, this one uh, a bit more avian looking um, a feathered beak one massive sort of like wren's eye and then a very humanoid eye on the other side of the face sort of looks up and chirps for a moment and then somehow through the beak you hear this kind of guttural almost like a, a warped common you look for shelter group trying to like chirp through this uh, through this warped face and as adrian kind of nods you watch as the figure reaches out this very long octopus tentacle and puts it over his shoulder <laughs> you see adrian visibly shudder it's 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 fine these people will, will protect you um uh, yes um it's cold it's slimy uh <laughs> as he kind of like moves underneath the uh, the octopus tentacle um Sticks, it is your turn. I believe it is Tithler's turn. It is Tithler's turn. Why does it keep trying to put Sticks first? Tithler, it is your turn. Because Sticks is the favourite, and that's fair. Clearly, oh, Sticks is the favourite. I was going to say, is it alphabetical? It must be. That must be how it's doing it. Wait, let me check. What do you. Yeah. 
<laughs> did you just like phone a friend in your mind? Like, how did you <laughs> check the alphabet? Did you actually just sing the alphabet in your head? No, it was a joke. I'm, well, I'm trying to make jokes here. I don't right? think it was a joke. I don't think it was a joke. I I challenged that it was. Joke? I don't know the alphabet. <laughs> I'm just going to clip. I don't know the alphabet as the clip. <laughs> <laughs> It's All going to be right. your new intro. Hi, my name's Jacob, and, and I don't know the alphabet. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you, you've got enough audio of me. You can just AI that shit now. You don't That's need fair. that. <laughs> That's fair. Good point. Um, Tithla will cast... Uh, which one is it? Ensnaring Strike at first level. Good spell. And cast... Uh, no, not cast. Shoot her bow at the gargoyles that are surrounded or surrounding. They're 2v2 with the little mutts. Just the one that's closest. Uh, I they don't they don't like being called that. That's, that feels like a slur. It's quite yeah. offensive. Um, I don't know the alphabet. I can't be held responsible. <laughs> <laughs> okay, he's Worship got me there. Runner. He's got me there. Uh, yeah, make me a, uh, a ranged attack, please. That is a sixteen to hit. Sixteen is not enough. Okay, that's unfortunate, isn't it? <laughs> As the arrow flies wide and strikes into the soil the magic of ensnaring strike fails nope. to activate the next time you hit a creature you can make another attack with your bow oh i guess i'll do that then. it's the next time you hit it's the next time you hit and you got you got two attacks okay. with your bow oh, so like, you're the boss. it's not the end of the world let's not <laughs> It's not right, limit. Yeah, mate, wait about it. As you, as you load the second arrow, get your eye and fire, it immediately strikes into one of the creatures. The you watch Jacob as the is like brushing up on the leg. I'm like, we pay attention to me. <laughs> you watch as, as Draco with his head kind of nudges the bottom of the bow a little bit, just pushing it into the right position. Um, <laughs> a little bit like uh, Gimli with Legolas when they're sending the warning shot. <laughs> he just sort of nudges yeah. it. Yeah. Uh, All right, that's eight from the bow. And you're striking the one that's attacking the mongrel folk, correct? Uh, yeah, probably the one that's closest, or yeah. unless one of them. Yeah, probably just the one that's closest. Um, yeah, eight from that, and the ensnaring strike is... I believe it's a... 1d6. Yep. Uh, and then it also has to make a strength, strength save. saving throw. Let's have a look. Uh, 15. Um, it would help if I... <laughs> You, yep, that saves. That's fine then. As you as you send out these vines, for a moment you think, "Aha, vines beat vines." We all know this. And as the sharp stones just cut through the vines in an instant, there's, mm -hmm. it's probably a moment of disappointment for for Tithla. But the five extra damage does count, of course. Mm -hmm. And Drake will infuse that for an extra one d six. Fire damage. Yeah, so that's one more fire damage. One point of fire damage doesn't matter. It's still fire damage. You watch as, again, as soon as the fire touches this creature, it pulls itself into this kind of, like, locked-in state, pulling its stones around itself, seeming to, to hold itself in position. Last time that didn't help too much because Luther rolled some incredible shots with his pistol, but who knows? Maybe this time you'll see what this does. Probably um, not. Anything else on your turn, Tithla? Um, yeah, she just wants to shuffle around to try and get a better view of things. Brilliant. As you're doing that, sticks... So, did Fartbot3000 see the vine person in the background? Are you talking about your character? Are you Fartbot3000? Well, I mean, hey, you, I mean <laughs> I think apparently his magic is just farts. So, you described yeah, it that way. That was your choice. I mean, all of this has been under your control. I don't know why you sound like you're upset about this. Or I don't know where the indignation's coming from. You did this to mm -hmm. yourself. This is just like <laughs> Luther being um, Edward from Twilight. He did it to himself. Also, yeah, like, can I, I just can back. I just say massive shout out to Foxtrot? If you haven't seen Foxtrot's fan art of Titha riding on Luther's back with Luther saying "Hold on tight, Spider Monkey" in the Discord, <laughs> oh you need God, to join the Discord and jump that. onto the D and D fan art. It is incredible. Nope. Somehow, somehow, the expressions that are being captured are just perfect. Chef's kiss to you, Foxtrot. You have done an amazing job. I am a massive fan. Well, art, is, art is subjective. Art is subjective, <laughs> but that is perfect. <laughs> it is perfection. I think we need to remove the Mona Lisa from... Um, we need to remove it from Paris. We need to remove it from the Louvre. It is now time to acknowledge the real art, <laughs> which is... It's so cute. I just looked at it. It's so cute. <laughs> but also, like the, the concern on Tithla's face... 
Yeah, I mean, perfect. that's fair. Perfect. That's great. <laughs> that's amazing. Right? It's incredible. I'm a huge fan. Oh, I will um I will add it to the artwork uh, overlay. If Foxtrot, if you give permission, um I've got a special one that shows like who the artist is and, and a link to your stuff. Um if you're happy for me to chuck it in the little art overlay above me and then have a link to your whatever um uh, art profile or art portfolios that you have online, along with your name and everything, let me know because I would love to have it come up as uh, as one of the the fan art things because it's very funny. It makes me very happy. <laughs> um, it's also just so good. It's great. It's just brilliant. Uh, sticks. Yes, you do see the druid get knocked out of this vine thing. The, the vines that were surrounding him were somehow hiding him from view, but the second he is blasted out of them by the abbot's lightning shot, you can now see this druid. Hard to say at this distance whether it's a male or a female, but you can see the hood that's up with these large deer-like antlers around it, the hood kind of hiding their face a little bit. Would it be safe to assume, given Styx's original role to find out what these guys are, would it be safe to assume that they'd be drawing parallels that this critter's been controlling those critters? Yeah, do you want to make me Styx? Do you want to make me a super quick uh, arcana check? Just another one. Just want to oh, see how much more you can draw. Quick. This. You watch how super fast quick. this is. It's taking a while already, I've got to say. Like, mm -hmm. 18 sticks i mean it's not impossible that whatever this thing is this this magic user if they could be a hundred percent the source of these creatures it's not impossible okay so you'd say there's a 50 50 chance <laughs> 50 50 chance i'm gonna smack your smart mouth in a minute <laughs> um, okay, cool. So knowing that, um, Styx is probably going to turn to the party as a whole, even though they're all kind of everywhere, and um, try to get their attention. Alert! The creature outside is possibly controlling them. And then he's just going to jump over the barricade, try and run past gargoyle friend directly in front of him and get as far as he can to um, the druid. Alrighty. Does a uh, 16 hit you, sticks? It sure does. That's going to be 7 points of slashing damage as you run past this creature. You watch as this slash of stone comes out of nowhere striking into your back as you bravely attempt to rush past it. Nice. Uh, and then I I can't work out what the distances are on here, so if you can just lend me a hand for getting me as far so as I can. So you've moved 5, 10, 15, 15, 20. So every, every, and then you, have, you can move 30, right? Correct. You can get right up to this druid. You can get yeah. right in their face. Nice. Um, and then, um, have I used my action to yell at everyone or free? Oh, no, 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 no. It's a free action to shout out. Oh, Lord. <laughs> Um, then I will, uh, I'm going to use my lovely clubby that I picked up. Um, and I'm also going to do Divine Smite on that at, um, second level. Fantastic. And Theo's the only one who gets to see what your Divine Smite looks like. <laughs> um, it's, it's more farts. Um. No, it's not. I'll describe it in a minute. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay. So... 20 hits, 4 yes. bludgeoning damage. Would you like to roll me some Divine Smiteys? I sure do. So here's to the first level, and then because it's second level, and I'm just still trying to work out how to use it. There's the second level. Alrighty, 5 and 6. Is that right? Yeah, 5 and 6. Yeah, yep. Yeah. 11 points of radiant damage. Theo. As Styx brings this club, it's not even a club, it's a section of, of a table leg that Styx has torn off some part of the furniture to, to create this thing. But as Styx brings it down on the head of this druid, who's still kind of recovering from being blasted with lightning, you watch as for a moment, light suddenly glows from within Styx's core. And the club is wreathed in this almost like ghostly golden blade that slams down repeatedly into this creature. 
um, as Styx makes this attack. The second it strikes, the blade disappears, leaving just the club. But for a moment, you could have sworn this this beautiful golden blade suddenly appeared in his hands. And I'm going to do it again, because I get two attacks. Yeah, man. Uh, and I'm going to do that with Divine Smite again as well. Uh, also at second level. 18 hits, two points of bludgeoning damage. Plus... Oh, fun. Seven and eight. Oh my god, this is brilliant. Again, as Styx brings the club down a second time, as the golden light begins to glow from within Styx's core, you watch as once again, the club is almost surrounded by the ghostly image of this golden blade slamming down into this creature dealing a whopping amount of damage as it cuts through. You'd swear for a moment this was an actual sword, the way it cuts through this creature's body. But then as soon as the, as soon as Styx sort of finishes the attack, pulling the club free, it, it's gone. This golden sword suddenly vanishes once again, the illusionary appearance of this golden sword disappearing, leaving just the table leg behind. Sticks with a stick. Sticks with a stick. Uh, anything else on your turn, Sticks? I think I've used uh, all of my turn. I'm just Fair. Stand there like a big old fart bot. <laughs> <sighs> just crop dusted me as your man <laughs> Please, no, let's not use the term crop dusting. <laughs> um, Theo, it's your go next. Uh, I will start by um, funneling a second level spell into myself as as healing which gets me 2d8 as the fur begins to grow back out the skin re-knitting you are healed 11 brilliant re-knit some of those wounds I got before I got angry um, and then I will continue laying into the first one that was that that I was harassing. I'll start with the, the raking my claws through it. Brilliant. 11 doesn't do much. 11 doesn't hit unfortunately. As your claws smash into it, it seems strangely resistant. And as before, I will try and bite a chunk out of the vines. Wow. 12. Unfortunately not. I'm so sorry. Anything else on your turn? Nope. That's my bonus action and my actions. Um, that's yeah, a shame. But besides just trying to get between that one that had been edging up to the, to the barricade, if possible, without... Um, you know what? Fuck it. I, it, it. If it's possible, I would like to wedge myself between that gargoyle and the barricade so it can't push past even if I take an attack of opportunity for the first one yeah absolutely easy done alrighty anything else yeah. on your turn Theo uh, just just my, my goal is just to stop these things from getting inside and, and harming my dear mongol folks no that's absolutely right uh, Jonor it is your go next Jonor reaches his hands into his uh, his jacket sort of similar to how Luther would draw his gun and as he pulls his hand out there's a flame just rolling between the fingers there. And he starts to look over the two gargoyles in the, uh, at, in the far corner. And when he's preparing to hurl a little firebolt that way, he hears sticks yell out, this is Druid out the front. And pretty intrigued by that, John is gonna just hold on to that little firebolt and walk his way over to um, the center, I think. 30 places me just behind this guy. The diagonal is very helpful at the moment. Um, right. Can I see? Can I see? I can't see the druid out there. There's no characters. No. All right. Not knowing what he's talking about, he's just going to hurl that firebolt um, at. Ooh. Can I get the gargoyles in the courtyard? There's a bunch of people in the way. Uh, what spell are you going to use? Ah, uh, firebolt. Yeah, absolutely. Spell. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's not not an area of effect spell. So 100. percent Of course you can. The Mongol folk aren't super big. These things are sort of weird and skitterish and moving up and down the walls. I mean, yeah, you can, you can absolutely target them. Well, as the uh, fire rolls around, he just throws it at the first one that 
rises above the rest of them. Uh, probably, probably the closest one. Brilliant. Uh, yeah, make me a ranged attack, please. That'll be 14. Not quite enough. Sorry, Jonor. Sorry, um, And seeing them probably lay into one of the mongrel folk, I'm just going to try and give them a little force pull to pull them away. Um, so this closest one. Um, closest one to the gargoyles. Sorry, the mongrel folk at the top. Yep. Try and pull it towards you. Yeah. Alrighty, I better make a strength save. Yes, please. That is a... Uh, 19 that'll pass yep passes sorry mate well that's, it, that's all for him all for Jonor last up in the issue of round is the druid sticks you watch as this figure sort of like pulls itself to its feet and as it turns its head towards you you can see why it's so hard to recognize this this figure it's actually wearing a mask wood white with this blood red, almost like a teardrop in the center of the forehead and red lines coming out of the eyes, almost like tears carved into the white wood of the mask, give it this very strange appearance. The teardrop on the forehead almost looks like a seed carved into it, like this this sort of like strange, yeah, almost, yeah, teardrop or seed-like appearance, but blood red. And as it turns towards you, you hear it mutter sticks. <sighs> Disgusting creature. Be gone from my sight. And it pulls out from its pockets a tiny glass jar, which it uncorks and tips into its hands, revealing a tiny scorpion, which it just like chucks on the ground in front of you. And then it begins muttering under its breath the figure. Rusufari simba turim. And you watch as the scorpion begins to stretch and grow, growing in size, darkening as the chitin begins to take on this much more angular, terrifying appearance as the um, as the druid casts giant insect on the scorpion, transforming a regular scorpion uh, into a giant scorpion. Could have been worse if he'd had ten centipedes in his pocket. He could have used it on ten centipedes, but he only had one scorpion, so it's just going to be Is that one scorpion. Worse? Would that be worse? That'd the be ten, cool. 10 centipedes can be pretty bad because they're giant centipedes when he's finished with them. But they can't climb. Centipedes can't climb. We all know that. Uh, that's it's not well true. Known. That's well known. They climb real good. That's not no, true. Well that's, I've that's, got that's, so many legs. That's, Wait, let me take the alphabet again. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, that's that's patently false, just as an FYI. Um, I'm just looking. I think I've got a, I've got a really good um, scorpion... Uh, token but it's, the alchemist fire. but it's from the return of the giants it's the um clockwork scorpion i'm going to use it for this just because it's too perfect not to because it's a terrifying token um as this enormous uh scorpion suddenly grows in front of you the dark chitin forming these like barbs across its form uh the druid is then going to um make an attack against you with an ability called fungal rot um, I need you to make me a constitution saving throw, please, Sticks. Uh, I can do that. Brilliant. Oh, and I get a plus one for that because of some funky shit which I've lost in the thing. Uh, your aura? Yeah, in integrated yeah, nice, protection. Nice. Look at you. Oh, wait, no, different one. Oh. Your it, it'll be it'll be yeah. your paladin aura. Um, yeah, sticks. Yeah, does a fifteen hit you? Uh, yeah. It does, it does hit you. see so garbage. Yeah. What's yeah, going on, mate? That's a twelve. I don't know why. Hang on. That can't be right. Hang on. <laughs> that's wearing, not wearing, not, you're not probably wearing armor. Hang oh. on. I did just wake up. Hang on. Hang on. Hang on. You you <laughs> hang on. You start you with the armor. same starting stuff. Hang on a minute. This is not correct. Let me have a look well, at your character sheet. Well, no, I didn't. I didn't get any starting stuff. I, I actively. Well, the whole chest of them that you could have just put on as, as you were like, bringing them upstairs. Where's your Where's your, where's like, your character? Why is you Why is your character not in the Curse of Strahd? Have you not I added it? I couldn't work out how to add it. 
So You're I just naked. Yeah. Okay, well, I, I, can't, work it out. I can't fix it for so you. Just just... It out there All right. in front of the um, wall. We're going to have to deal with this at a later date. Maybe after we've recorded your intro at the end of this session, we will also quickly fix this up for you. Um, it, in that case, then it stands that you, you have an armor class of 12. Until I can figure out what you've done wrong, that is, that's, that's what it's going to be. Um, yeah. That is going to be a 15 does hit. Oh, Holy shit. Uh, what was your con save? 21. Okay, thank God. This was going to be a lot worse. That's going to be 10 points. Uh, sorry, where we find it? 10 points of necrotic damage. Okay. Um, and you're going to take half the poison damage, which I actually rolled max for. Um no, I didn't. I rolled uh, one number max. Uh, that's going to be 22 halved to 11. So 11 poison damage sticks. Uh, I believe you have uh, resistance have to poison. On saving throws against poison. But you, may make another, you may make another con save. Uh, I'm, I'm going to do that. I'm going to have another one. Uh, it's um, still, it's, you, you did pass anyway. This is on the, the 11's on a 8. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Take the 21. But I do have resistance to Halved poison again. Damage. So 5 poison damage total. 22 so, to 5, that's not bad. So 15 total? 15 total damage. Nice. Uh, that's the druid's full go. Luther, it is your go next. Alright. So how tall is this wall here? Uh, it is... Let me have a quick peek. Bear with me two seconds. I believe from memory it's 20 feet high, but I could be wrong. Give me two seconds and I'll tell you right now. Um... Do, do, do. Uh, 15 foot high walls. I was pretty close, actually. Cool, cool. All right, so I'm going to go 5, 10, 15, reach the base of it. Yep. And then and just then walk up the side. Another 15 <laughs> to walk up. Yeah. Um, and then appear on the top. Yeah, on top of the crenellations. So, a little spider monkey. <laughs> and I'm going to move <laughs> myself so I can sort of... Yeah. Maybe I'll sit there, Owen, because I'm mm -hmm. sitting on the top. Yep. And now I can see the whole battlefield from up here pretty much. Yeah. Awesome. I'm going to try and... I'm going to try... I'm going to I'm gonna try and hit that druid at the back. He, he's really annoying. I've got a roll initiative for the scorpion too before I forget. I hadn't done that earlier. Let's see where it appears. Uh, now you can forget. Ah, fantastic. <laughs> Well, that's, that doesn't sound good. <laughs> 14. It's not that bad. It's not good. It is for me. Uh, all of us rolled below a 12, so... Yeah, I know. What's up with that, guys? Yeah. We blame you. I blame my low armor class. <laughs> <laughs> and that's your fault. <laughs> it's not my fault. I can't take any... I can't take any credit for that. Not this time. Okay. What are you thinking, Luther? What's your plan? So, I'm going to dump everything I have into that druid at the back. Oh, shit. Okay. So I'm going to do a pistol shot. So, we've got the fart bot and then we've got hit. Luther dumping on the druid. Great. Um, 24 is going to hit. Absolutely. So, 14 piercing damage on top of that one. And I'm going to throw in yep. a superiority die. I'm going to do a um, menacing attack. So when I hit with a weapon attack, I can expend one superiority die to add the total to the damage roll, and the target must make a wisdom saving throw. Alrighty, on I'll a make failure, a wisdom It is frightened throw. of you until the end of your next turn. So if it does have uh, immunity to um, frightened, you don't have to roll. No, it does have immunity to charm. Not sorry, not immunity to charmed. It has um, advantage on charmed, but not no, not against frighten effects. So that is going to be a uh, seventeen on the wisdom save. Oh, yeah, that's enough. It was a DC oh, 15. Damn. Damn. That's fine. Uh, it will take another six damage on top six of that. Six damage, yep. From the superiority dice. Uh, 18 to hit, 12 piercing. 18 hits, 12 piercing damage. Cool. You are just blasting this creature. Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, I'm going to do an action surge. I'm going to take another shot. 17 to hit. 17 does hit. Uh, five piercing, not as much, but I'm going to add another superior die to do another menacing attack. Brilliant. I will make another wisdom saving throw. That's four damage. Wisdom, wisdom, wisdom. 21, sorry. It does nah, make sense that druids would be quite wise, though. That's all good. I'm going to do another attack. 
16 to hit. I missed the four damage before from the superiority dice. Yep, 16 does hit. Yep, absolutely. So 12 piercing damage. I'm not going to do any more superiority die. I might leave it for now. Actually, how bloodied is he looking? Oh, yeah. I mean, as you look down at him, you can see there are three bleeding bullet holes in his chest. He is looking quite hurt. I mean, you've just dealt... Let me just quickly go back and check the damage. You've dealt 30-something damage. I think 35 damage this turn so far. <laughs> more than, actually. Way more than, sorry. Um, okay. you've, almost dealt, you've almost dealt 50 damage this turn. Fuck yes. <laughs> I'm going to leave it that for now, I think. Cool. Alrighty. As I, yeah, as I just sort of rush up the wall up to the the on top of the walls and um just unload everything i have into that druid sticks uh that. you watch as the druid with the mask as it sort of looks towards you these shots ringing out as he as he sort of like takes these hits to his chest the the mask turns towards you and he just <clears throat> and you watch as blood pushes out through the mouthpiece of the mask yeah good yeah <laughs> <laughs> anything else on your turn Luther? <laughs> Uh, um, no, no, that'd be it. Uh, I'll end it there. The gargoyles are next. And there's one thing I forgot to do at the end, uh, end of the initiative round. Um, Jacob, you look so happy. Could you roll me a d20, please? What letter does that come after? Um, F <laughs> and U, if you look really hard. Right in between there. 11. Um, alrighty. Um, do, 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 Okay. Where Theo, are those right next to you, you watch as one of these stone creatures, the one towards the south, slams its head into the wall, the vines growing into the gatehouse of the abbey, and another one pulling itself free. Oh, uh, on the gargoyle's turn, uh, one of the gargoyles is going to climb up to the top of the uh, embankment, top of the walls where Luther is. And it is going to attack Luther, not being happy at all about the damage to its master. Uh, Luther does a do, 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 two. Okay, does a twelve hit? I'm guessing not. Ah, uh, no, no, that misses. And a natural one doesn't hit. You watch as the creature gets to the top, tries to attack you, and then tumbles off, landing back down at the bottom, having oh. just completely failed to attack you. The natural one causing it to tumble down off the walls. Uh, Theo. One of these creatures is going to try and move past you. Would you like to make an attack of opportunity? Hell yeah, I would. I thought you might. I'll go the claws. Give him the claws. Are you fucking kidding me? <laughs> I think um, I have rolled above a seven. I think that's the highest attack roll I've made tonight. That's a 13. Unfortunately, that Bro, is not going to be enough. You haven't made that. So you haven't made it. <laughs> no, you've rolled that. But you actually didn't make it. <laughs> Again, you want to look for this archived under F and U if you're going through the <laughs> alphabet in order. Um, you could also try C, U, N. Uh, uh, as the gargoyle rushes through the gaps in the gates towards... Um, oh, it's got to run past the abbot. What the fuck kind of barricade was this, Dix? It can just walk through it. Look, <laughs> these tried. things have a climbing speed. If you'd be if you'd been up against undead, this would have been fucking awesome. Unfortunately, these things have a climbing speed, and so it just walks over the barricades. <laughs> um, could I get has? Could you please roll me a d twenty, just a flat d twenty? I just want to see how much the abbot is. Eleven. Okay. As the gargoyle goes to rush past the abbot, attempting to try and attack Tithla and Dracob, Tithla and Dracob are currently like sort of stopped up just behind the abbot. As the gargoyle brings down, uh, essentially brings down one of the stone claws that it has formed to try and attack you, Tithla, you watch as the abbot suddenly slams his arm down into it, this mace dropping out from under his robes as he uses his protection feature uh, to basically prevent this creature attacking you. Um, he has rolled more than the damage. It does not do any damage to you. Take no damage from this attack. Um, Somebody stick near him. Yeah, that's probably fair. That is that gargoyles go. The other one, the other two are going to make their attacks against the mongrel folk. 
you watch as another mongrel folk bites the dust um the gargoyle rushing over its corpse and making its way towards otto and uh, dracob near the well no otto the abbot is going to use his turn to bring the uh <laughs> bring the mace down on the head of this gargoyle that is going to be Will one of those oh. gargoyles bolt up uh yeah that that one hasn't made an attack yet you'll notice oh. I'll get to that at the end. I just wanted to do the abbot first. Um, when we get to the end of the round, after it's had a full round of being balled up, we'll get to that. Oh, good. Just uh, like yeah, no, it's just it's just for me. I need to know when it's balled up for AC and also for the end of the round when things happen. Um, yeah, as the abbot goes to slam down his mace onto the head of this gargoyle, he rolls a natural one. You watch as the abbot freezes in position, his eyes going wide as he looks around. Ah, enemies, enemies everywhere! And he begins swiping at the air, attacking nothing. Uh, the giant scorpion. Giant scorpions next. Um, sticks. Yeah. It's just it's just you there, buddy. Yes. <laughs> giant scorpion's gonna make. Giant scorpion's gonna make two attacks. Uh, sorry, three attacks. Two with its claws. One with its sting. Um, that is going to be a twenty to hit you. That'll do it. Uh, so that's the claw. Um, a fifteen is also gonna hit you with the claw. Yep. The good news is. Um, I didn't roll very well on the damage. That's only going to be... So the two claw attacks uh, deal three damage and eight damage. So a total of 11 damage. Mm -hmm. And the sting, I only rolled a six. That does not hit you. That's true, but uh, sticks is down. <laughs> no, easy come, easy go. Need sticks. to recall that intro, buddy. <laughs> what was the damage that knocked you down? Was it the eight from the second claw attack? It was. Could you please roll me a d20, please? Uh, we need to see if you're taking an injury. I can do Sorry, sorry, that. sorry, not a d20, a constitution saving throw, sorry, to, to see I the injury check. Do that too. Uh, the DC is 8. 20, you are not going to take an injury for this. Sticks, as you drop to 0, the power that's animating you suddenly runs out. And you just freeze in position. Suddenly stationary. Falls over. Uh, which means that if you fell at the 8... The sting, it's not going to use the sting on you. As you drop to the ground, it's going to move up and use the sting on Theo. Uh, Theo, a six doesn't hit you, does it? It doesn't. <laughs> then you take no damage from this. <laughs> it Very is, good. It is Killian's go. Killian, please tell me you oh, can that, save the day. That changes things. Um, I'm hoping I can save the day. My, the question is, do I now have access to everything? You are leveled back up to the warlock you were before. This time with the Celestial as your patron. Okay, so standing in this corridor, in in this um, in the dining room, I'm just going to look to Adrian. Stay here. I'll be I'll be back in a moment. And feeling that warm presence around me, I just and the the glowing light on my hand, I naturally reach for the necklace that I have to Kellenvor, and I step out into back into the courtyard area the symbol begins to glow in my hand and the shield glows bright as this symbol solidifies into it it's got the the, the setting or rising sun of uh lysander but in the center of it is the skeletal hand with the scales of kelimvor as they've sort of meshed together into one mm -hmm. uh I'm going to step out of said room um, with shield in hand, see everything going on and hold, holding the shield up. I'm just going to bring my hand across my body uh, wider, wide open. The This bright light forms in my hand and shapes itself into that of a pistol. And I'm going to point it towards this gargoyle hill because I'm keeping I'm keeping the Lucian ship going. Okay. I'm gonna point it this, <laughs> this gargoyle here and I'm gonna use Eldridge Blast firing two shots from the pistol. Nice. Force damage is good too. We like force damage. Oh no. That's a twelve to hit. Twelve doesn't hit, I'm so sorry. What is with us tonight? And a seventeen to hit. Seventeen is the DC. Okay, so I'm going to do ooh, 13 points of force damage to it. 13 points of force damage. Boom. 
as the blast of eldritch energy strikes across the body of this creature, you watch as one of the upper sections of this sort of fragmented torso is blasted apart, revealing this writhing mass of vines hiding just under the surface of the worked stone. Um, I'm going to look over to Tifla, and Tifla's right in contact with one of the gargoyles. Just go, Tifla, be careful, don't get yourself hurt. And the these wings form around Tiff. The one is a radiant radiant coloured wing, the other one is a black wing, and they form around Tiffler like armor as I cast uh, Shield of Faith on Tiffler, giving you plus two to AC being plus you are in melee. Two combat. AC. Oh. Thanks. Immediately living up to your oath of protection as a celestial walk. Right yeah, I mean, l- l- lucky Tithler's got that 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 there in front of the single gargoyle, <laughs> standing there with two yeah. gargoyles and a giant scorpion on my face. <laughs> I was thinking I've got a way that I can get to Sticks, but that's complete meta game if I do that. <laughs> <laughs> Sticks, my man. I'm gonna need your first first death save, please. This has come a lot yeah. quicker than uh, it did for Grinner. It certainly <laughs> has. Uh, why is that not giving me an option to do it? There we go. I'd really prefer you don't Admittedly, kill the character though, after I did some cool character. Oh, it was in that one. Admittedly, oh. if Fix had actually oh. run, he would have like 20 something AC. <laughs> Jesus Christ! Why? Why? Would you do that? What are the odds? 50%. 50 50. It's either a one or it's not. <laughs> So what you're telling us, Owen, if you really like doing brand new character art? <laughs> I've got I've got so many commissions in the queue. I cannot push them back to do another character art <laughs> for Sticks. Sticks will survive. Sticks, that's color. two failed death saves. Um, Sticks. <clears throat> uh-huh. There is silence, cold all around you. You can feel a fear from deep within your core. And as you look down at yourself, you see not the body of your Gloomforged. You instead see a beautiful golden sword. Split. Broken. The hilt vanishing off, disappearing. The blade left to clatter onto the ground before hands reach for it and begin to pick it up. Suddenly the cold is replaced by warmth and fire as the hand drops the blade inside a large forge. Only it's not the blade, it's you. Buried in the hot coals, you watch as your hand begins to melt in front of your eyes as your vision goes black. Uh, That is Styx's go. (laughs) Tithla! Cool. So, <laughs> Owen, hello. You see this the guy thing? here. I want to run. I want to do a bunch of stuff. Yeah. And I think I'm borderline how much is reasonable. Okay. I does it fit like... inside the action bonus action and movement? Because if it does, you're safe. Hundred percent. Hundred percent. Okay. I would like to not move, and sort of as my movement give a vial of super alchemist fire to Dracob and then as my bonus action tell Dracob to go and break that on the giant scorpion <laughs> sending in suicide Dracob <laughs> <laughs> and then use my action to cure wounds Allahu Drake bar <laughs> oh sorry it's word. is that okay <laughs> um absolutely oh, no, Tithler bonus action there's some art in that oh, no. is that a problem <laughs> No, I think that's absolutely amazing. Rule of cool. I absolutely allow. I love being next to that too. Because I want to do healing word as well, but I've just realized that's a bonus action. You can use the action to uh, do this, like getting the vial ready. I'm happy for you to turn it into an action. That's fine. It's probably more an action than it is a bonus action. Lovely. So that's that's my whole turn. I want to give Drake the vial. So go and crack that on the the scorpion. Uh, The dragon is fire so that should help a little it'll be half damage so yes so it'll definitely help um yeah okay i'll cast healing word at second level so um could you i'm guessing sticks on sticks the one who's <laughs> <after that. laughs> now myself 
Can you see him through the barricade? I believe would I even, can. Would you even know he's gone down? What's your passive perception, Tithla? I thought there was If you can see it on the map, you can see it. Right, but I what's your on the map. what's your passive this is the perception? This shittest barricade in the world. Then <laughs> you can see through it. You can walk through it. Fucking hell! <laughs> what's your what's your what's your passive perception, Tithla? Fifteen. Then yes, you can see. Uh, Fourteen, I said, would have been like to see through the gaps in the barricade, to look past the harp. Um, alrighty, can you have Draco? She's used to looking through the forest. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Um, is this this heart just like a, like an archway through this barricade? <laughs> <laughs> it's only it's only about as tall as a person, and so like Tithla jumping can kind of like just see over it because of the distance that she is from the barricade and looking like over the top because the land's a little bit the ground's a little bit higher on the other side, right? Because the abbey's slightly sunken down because of the position of the mountainside, it means that Styx is kind of just within view because Tithla's looking up a up a slope over the top of the barricade. What was the point of the barricade? It's a good question. The point of the barricade was to keep out zombies or other such creatures. Um, unfortunately, these aren't zombies. <laughs> these, are <laughs> these are not zombies. Again, you did that. <laughs> I did. <laughs> Actually, in my defense, in my defense, I had four different encounters that could have happened as a result of you guys getting back here. This was a rolled encounter. Fair enough. So I thought could've... he was going to say, in his defense, it was the world, not him. In my defense, <laughs> I can do whatever I want, I guess. <laughs> uh, yeah, could you please, uh, Tithla, right. could you please word? have Drake? Yeah, let's do the healing word. And then could you have Drake please make, I'm going to call this just an attack. Just just make a, just make a, a, a melee attack with Drake, like a bite, let's say. Yep, but I have a bite with Drake. So right. That's so that's 10 healing. Brilliant. Sticks, you're at 10 hit points. Hey! Hell yeah! Standing in front of the druid who knocked you basically down. <laughs> yeah, well, uh, a bite we'll attack. That. Bite, please. Bite attack? Yes. Yep. That's a nat 20. It's a natural fucking 20. Um, That's a nat 20, baby. Dracob rushes forwards, and rather than, like, smashing into this creature with the, the vial of alchemist fire, Dracob actually darts underneath the gargoyle, flinging his head back, throwing the vial so that it smashes in the air just above the giant scorpion, raining down this burning fluid. You watch as as soon as the flask shatters, the liquid ignites immediately, not burning with these red hot flames, but instead this white flash, almost a magnesium flare as it drenches the scorpion. Um... Tithla, mm -hmm. could you please roll me 3d8? Oh, damn. Oh, that was... That's an eight. Five. That's a good start. Five. Okay. 13. You do 13 points of damage to the giant scorpion as fire rains down from above, slamming into it. You hear this awful chittering noise, this like chitin on chitin chattering as the scorpion kind of twists and darts no fire is spread on top of Theo, just the scorpion. Nice. We're good. We got a we got a connection, me and Jacob. <laughs> Anything else on your turn, Tithla? I think that's a fair amount of stuff on my turn. Theo, it is your turn next. All right. All right. Now, hearing what Stig said previously before he got he got fucked up by the scorpion, um, and my general hate for the corrupted druid. Is there any? feasible way past these guys or have they formed a pretty impenetrable wall oh point? no i mean you can essentially the way they've kind of aligned themselves with um drake kind of in position near here if you were to duck next to drake and then push through the gap between the giant scorpion and the gargoyle on the southern side or on the northern side you, you could kind of push through but keep in mind you will be taking a tax of opportunity if you don't get clear yeah all right i'm, I'm gonna try and make a beeline for for the druid so roll an attack of opportunity for Giant scorpion and the creature. And the guard, yeah. It's going to make a sting attack because it does not like you. And then it's going to be a claw attack. Ah, oh, Theo. Yeah. Seven. Nope. Natural one. <laughs> that does. The meat meat Shit. Beats it. <laughs> uh, okay, that's going to be for the giant scorpion with the stinger. Uh, that's going to be. Uh, 34 points of damage, 10 from the sting and 24 from the poison. Oh, wait, no, it's a natural one. No, you're fine. You're uh, absolutely fine. As you duck through and push past the scorpion and the gargoyle, your ursine form, this large bayonling form, is it, it is surprisingly quick. 
it's much faster than a bear. You have kind of like the elk nimbleness. And as you, I'm going to say you actually do like a, a standing jump over them using kind of like the elk um, powerful hind legs to push yourself free as you vault over them and rush towards the druid. What would you like to do? Yeah, so bear, bear legs begin deep digging into the front, sprinting as fast as I can, roar as I just sprint up and try to smash one of my metal assisted claws down into this guy's face. Brilliant. Oh, for fuck's sake! That's a natural one. <laughs> <laughs> That's two! <laughs> um, how, I just want to do a quick check because we do have the, the fun coin rule in this game where if you if you fail consistently, uh, you do get a re-roll. <laughs> Let me just see how many times you failed on your rolls and if you've had any success... No, I've got to hit a single strike. You I'm haven't sorry, had a so single funny. successful roll. I would like to give you advantage on this roll. Would you like to roll again, please? As the, the have fun coin is granted. You don't have to spend it now, but you have a fun <laughs> coin for a re-roll when you want to spend it. Fun please coin's gone straight in right now. <laughs> <laughs> Bank it. Now, spend it. Let's go. Watch it be another natural one. <laughs> no, nah, we're on now. 25, we're back. <laughs> we're having fun again. Uh, that obviously hits 11 points of damage. Would you also like oh. to roll me an extra D6, please? Plus two for the rage. For the I'm rage, well. yes. Four points of damage. Boom, boom, boom. Alrighty. As you strike against this druid, bearing down on it, you watch as for a second the druid freezes as he sees you, and then you hear under his breath, a shapeshifter. Yep. That's what he says. Cool. Uh, if he's still standing after that, um, he's getting the. He's, getting he's the still bus. standing. Brilliant. Time to. Time to sink those teeth in deep, hey? 14 doesn't hit, does it? Uh, let me check the druid, sorry. It might do. Cool. 14 is the armor class. Yeah! He's not, he's not, he's not immensely defenseful. He's just, so that's seven plus two is nine points of damage. I mean, he's just, he looks like he's wearing hide armor. He doesn't look like he's going to be that hard to hit. Yes, yeah, so you slam into biting down. You hear this cry from underneath and then, oh, please, hi, hi, you, I need you, you need me. As you try and like bite into him. Um, that is all your turn, Theo, I'm guessing. It is indeed. Um, yeah, that'll cover it. Jonor, it is your turn. What is going on out there? Theo just ran through. I, I cannot see from here. And he flicks his shoulders forwards. The wings pop out. This gold dust just like sprinkles out behind him. And he flutters on upwards and flies, uh, you know, the 45 degrees and tries to plant himself um, probably up near Luther just to get yeah. like yeah, yeah. overhead to, yeah, to see what is going on you can easily fly up and and land on the walls next to luther looking down at the battlefield below jonah the view of this battlefield is kind of dire you can see sticks facing off against this druid sticks is very much hurt the druid however looks equally damaged currently in the jaws of theo in his bayoning form who's shaking this figure almost like a rag doll in his jaws mauling this druid Underneath, though, directly below you, the giant scorpion that the druid had summoned um, is currently looking like it's trying to attack the barricade, unable to make it over the top because of its large size. Um, yeah. Looks like uh, you got that uh, sort of under control there, Theo. And um, oh, geez, I am sorry, Draco. And at this point, the air begins to compress around Jonor again. And it just from the gathering of wind beneath his wings all sucks it into this cube compresses and he reaches into his cloak grabs another bit of rock and at the same point crushes the rock and lets it explode thunderous thunderous th uh, sound comes out from right underneath that giant centipede all righty so specifically you didn't have to hit drake if you're choosing to hit drake i just want that on the record <laughs> yep I've, I've got it recorded. I either um, get sticks thank you. or I get Drake. <laughs> so the gargoyle, Drake, the gargoyle and the giant scorpion all need to make constitution saving throws. This is going to be fun. This is real fun to play and with. And this friends. is a <laughs> upcast third level shatter. It's a particularly strong one. <laughs> Holy shit. Um, 
Alrighty. Uh, that is going to be a five from one of the gargoyles, an 18 from another one, and a 17 from the giant scorpion. That's a nine, a nine from Dracob. Uh, so 13 points uh, is the full damage for Dracob and one of the gargoyles. Cool. And damage halved. on that other gargoyle. The one that passed. Oh yes, yeah, sorry. They sorry, I did not roll with disadvantage for those gargoyles. Sorry, apologies. It should be disadvantage for both gargoyles. Excuse me, I need to roll again. My apologies. I forgot. Uh they're both gonna fail now. That's a five for the second one. Thirteen points, and for the scorpion, which does pass, that is going to be six points of thunder damage. Um, there is the crack of thunder and then a little bit of a beaming light that burns all that around with uh the three radiant damage that also is from the little flavor of a asimar amazing as the spell effect sorry, goes off so sorry uh i do need to quickly double check is um giant insect a concentration spell yes it is i need to make some concentration checks really quickly for the golgari shaman for the uh for the druid uh so that was so you did two attacks so i've got to make two cut uh, Jonor, don't worry about the giant scorpion. It's not a giant scorpion. That's a natural one. As the as Theo begins to tear into this um, druid and begins shaking it, you watch as the scorpion begins to begin to shrink down. And as you let loose this thunderous explosion of power, the scorpion just pops like a balloon and is instantly destroyed. <laughs> Neat as. <laughs> It's um, fantastic. <laughs> Nido. I just imagine Jonah on the roof, like watching Drake get smashed with this thunder damage, being like, Nido burrito. <laughs> Anything else on your turn, Jonah? That's not good. No, nah, that's it. Uh, the druid is next. Um, the druid is really hurt. He's not happy about you, Theo. He's going to make one final attempt to try and get you off him. Um, you hear from the, behind the mask, kind of muffled by the wood of the mask. Oh, you can't do this. Please, you don't understand. And then as you kind of bite down a little bit further, you watch as the druid holds up his hand, dark energy summoning into it and then presses it against your side. Um, I am going to need you to make me a constitution saving throw, please, Theo. That's a spell effect, I assume. It is a spell. Cool, I get advantage on that bad boy. You fucking say Would I see this spell being cast onto Theo? Definitely. Seeing that darkness just start washing over Theo, uh, Dronor's going to spin some of that gold light. He's going to, from his hands, dagger three lights, three blades of light come and like pierce into the darkness that was rolling over him as uh, Dronor casts counter spell. Ah, what I what do. level what level are you casting counter spell? Third. You watch as whatever spell this druid was trying to cast immediately is torn to shreds. The weave just shattering as these golden lights begin to power through it. There's a pause as the druid kind of looks at his hand in confusion, the magic just failing him, and as he turns this sort of blank mask-like face up towards Jonor, you watch as he sort of shakes his head a little bit. Uh, that's fucked things up. Nito burrito. Um, <laughs> My God. Yeah, I mean, he's gonna have to go for a fungal rot. That's the only thing left to him. Um, Theo, as you bite down into this disgustingly necrotic druid, um, he is going to infect you with his disgusting rotting druid body. Does a twenty-three hit you? as he just sort of turns towards you, the spell failing, and instead just places his disgusting hand on your shoulder. 23 misses. 23 misses. Dang. Well, you were going to take 11 points of necrotic damage, and I was going to get you to make me a uh, a constitution save, um, which you will still need to make because it does hit. Is that six when halved? Uh, yeah, so it'll be halved down. No, five. So 11 necrotic halved to five. And he gets a bonus one on his save. A bonus one? Yep, you get a bonus one. Because you're within range of Styx's aura of protection. Ah, my guy. All right. My man. And it's con? And it's con? Con save, please, yes. Your, be- your best one, basically. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and this isn't a spell, is it? 
uh, this is not a spell, but you use the Bayonlin Constitution because you're currently inhabiting yeah, its physical yeah. body. So you should be pretty good with this. Yes, I 20. 21. 21. Um, you are only going to take half damage on the uh, poison damage. That is going to be six points of poison damage. Half to three. Are you resistant to poison? Resistant to everything but psychic, my guy. That's right. You are bear totem. You are cocaine bear. Uh, that's the druid's full go. Uh, at the end of the round, could I have wrath? You look like you're happy. Can you roll me a d20, please? You bet I can. Here it comes. 16. No special things happen, unfortunately. Uh, the Luther. Luther, it's your turn. Perfect. So, obviously seeing the druid still around and being a fairly potent spellcaster. Yeah. He's let off some things that are interesting, the, the things he's talking about. So, my next shots I'm going to take, we're going to be aiming for the more non-lethal spots. Okay. I'm going to try, like, so arms, sort of shoulders. Absolutely. Heads, shoulders, Arches. knees and toes, obviously. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Lovely. <laughs> Monica the head part. Yeah. All right, so I'm going to chuck in a pistol shot. I'm going to do this one with sharpshooter as well to even pinpoint it. Take, like, because, like, it makes sense in a way. Like, it does. Particular Absolutely. Spots. Yeah. So there's going to be a minus five to this, but... 10 plus to damage. Ooh. 25 to hit goes to 20 to hit. So 6 piercing plus 10, so 16 piercing. Luther, how do you want to do this? Well, like, so perfect. So he's already torn up. He's already taken he's a lot of damage. He's pretty badly mauled. He's yeah. got a few bullet wounds already. I'm going to pop him right in the shoulder. Um, and, then, and then that impact's going to send him sort of hurtling into the brick behind him and just sort of. He'll just sort of hit the ground unconscious. That is what I'm hoping for. We'll yeah, as the, the shoulder. as the bullet kind of strikes through into the shoulder, spinning him around and causing him to tumble. Uh, it's not even a wall. It's actually a very, it's a very, very small stone wall, roughly waist height. And you can't quite see it from here, but I'll delete it off the map. There's actually a little ravine over the other side. Um, it's not, it's like, like a small drop down, maybe like 10 feet. And as you knock him over, he tumbles and rolls, striking his head against a rock and falling unconscious as this shot kind of takes him on the shoulder and knocks him down this small ravine. With that, the second he is unconscious, you watch as the vines immediately cease to animate, the stone just falling apart, dropping to the ground as each of the gargoyles is no longer animated, or the stone blights, I should say. That is going to take us out of initiative. Hoorah. Hoorah. All right, all right, all right. Can I can I heal can I heal sticks? <laughs> yeah, as you uh, as you look over at sticks, sort of rushing forwards, you can oh. see sticks is pretty damaged. Would be fair to say, Raf. Mm -hmm. Are there any dying Mongol folk? Uh, not quite dead. Yes, as you rush up, the Mongol folk who was most recently knocked down. As you, as you rush up and uh, currently in Bayonling form, you can see that he's still sort of like breathing in these ragged breaths. Um, this very almost like cat-like appearance to the face and um, almost like fish scales across the upper body as the mongrel folk <gasps> tries to breathe in this large jagged mark across his chest where the stone pierced through into one of his lungs, collapsing it. Uh, well, I will immediately drop out of bear form and slap a healing word into him. Brilliant. As you, as you slap a healing word into him, his breathing becomes less ragged. And see, <gasps> thank, thank you, thank you. As he coughs and out, yeah, pick him up and take him back down to people who are a bit better at that than I am. Try and lean on Tithler's um, medical expertise, medical genius. genius. Yeah. As I as I get to the um, where the barricade is, I can just see sticks on the floor. Um, I don't I don't know if this is going to work, but I'm I'm going to try it, and I pull. The shield's disappeared at this point because the combat's over, and I pull on the tattoo, and I just sort of pull off of that, and then sort of gently push it forward as I use my healing light feature, and I'll use three d six of my six d six to heal you for sixteen. Sixteen hit points. That's Ooh, outstanding. I'm not needed anymore. <laughs> 
Um, Styx is just going to stare at you really intently while you do that and just kind of take all of that in. Uh, doesn't say anything. Killian, the magic that you're using, this this healing energy, Styx doesn't seem to kind of like react to it normally. Instead, you watch as the energy is immediately pulled into Styx's core rather than actually healing him. It's the magic of the spell itself, and the Styx kind of absorbs this energy. You watch as Styx begins to sort of like the sections of sticks begin to re and fix themselves as Styx's core glows even brighter from this magical energy. All right, so it's not your... So it's not like with the rest of us where it's your physical body that's healed, it's your spiritual magical body that's healed. It's fine. I have a, There's ways that we can repair your physical body, but you need to get your ass in here. Okay. And Styx just follows... <laughs> Perfect. As you, as the two of you climb back over the barricades, with a lot of difficulty, these barricades are very well constructed. As you climb back over the barricades onto the into the inner courtyard, <laughs> stumbling over one of the broken harps, um, you watch oh, as the, these things were useful. Yeah, you watch as the abbot, um, seeming to have a bit more of a, a grasp on his sanity, once again turns towards you. That was not the attack that I was expecting. These creatures, they do not recognize them. They are the druids of, of yesterday, I believe, the um, corrupted, unholy abominations. If these are indeed the creatures of Yesterhill, then these are the creatures belong to Sergei. He is the one who controls the druids. They are his creatures, his followers. They worship death now, death and undeath in all its forms. The druids are truly lost. To think that they would be so brazen to attack here. But they were not after. It seemed like they were after that boy that you brought in, the one that you put inside. Why would they care about such a child? Uh, they seem to want to take over the, the winery, uh, the Wizards of Wine. Um, why would not know? I, um, it is very fertile I, land. Perhaps they are looking for a new nursery for their creatures, the, the blights that they create and send out into the world. Yes, I feel a bit terrible. I kind of promised to take care of them, but uh, we came here first to get our friends healed before we went, and it seems it was um, too much of a delay. Could it not have something to do with the what you told us happened in Falaki, Theo? Could it not be a retaliation to that? I was already blaming myself. Maybe we don't need to put more blame onto me. <laughs> I did not mean anything by it. <laughs> I did not I mean, mean it in be... that way, but... <laughs> they could be I, I see your oath wasn't an oath to protect my feelings. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, my power! <laughs> uh, you lose all warlock levels. And, uh... <laughs> oh, it could be going after that. Sorry, Jenna. Sorry, Jenna. Could be uh, maybe the, the gem. They got some sort of crystal going on there to promote growth. If the druids got a whiff of that one, then perhaps they uh, they want to get some of that juice going on in their in their herd. The one, I, did I did Theo know about this growth crystal? Or have I just forgotten that as the player? You've forgotten that as the player. Theo, Theo remembers the mention of some sort of like the, the, the three gemstones enchanted to essentially provide the, oh, that's right. the replacement yeah. light that Barovia has so little of. They kind of encourage growth and, and replace the natural sunlight with this. Um, Almost like, imagine like gentle waves of magical energy replacing sunlight to encourage plant growth. Could just, I mean, does that make sense? Maybe they were, they were after that, or um, yeah, maybe Sergei has egged them on since I um, made us known to him. Um, either way, I think we need to make a stop immediately after this to take care of the rest of these druids to stop them from attacking innocent people. That does make sense. Uh, Adrian, Does um, d why do you think they attacked you? I, I can only assume it was for the crystals. We've had raids before, and, and then those... those um, you talked about the flower that was down near the lower fields. Well, I, after you told us about it and that you defeated it, we went down and burned some of the vines around there as well. And there were more, cre these like tendrils of, of like blood red vines trying to grow through from the soil. Uh, yeah, I mean... It seemed a lot to us, like they were trying to take over the, the land itself, like trying to grow around and, and poison us, and trap us within the, the winery. The the only warning we got was 
the the, the sound of like the, the sound of the timber creaking as they tore through the front door. Did they guess the crystals? I think they did. I, I mean, I don't know how they could have not got them. My uh, father was. I, I don't know. I don't know how many of them are safe. My father and my sister got out, but my younger brothers. And you can see him kind of freeze and falter. I don't know if they're okay or not. And then, even then, I don't know if, if my sister and if my father are still okay. Like, they told me to fly to, to to get to you guys as fast as I could, and I did. But then this creature came after me. I flew and as fast as I could. These creatures will do to the rest of them. Yes, all of these druids will die. Um, does, does that druid look dead or just a bit? Unconscious. So, Looks like Luther knocked him out. Well, yeah, I, I'm going to... Well, I was waiting for you guys to finish the conversation. I do have some ideas. Oh, no, he's getting a question in. <laughs> so, yeah, I guess... Um, well, this is a good segue into it then. Um, while you guys are having that conversation, Luther's going to go over there. He's going to grab his manacles out first um, and hog time pretty much. So one manacle for the arms, one manacle for the legs. And then I'm going to do a... He, I'm going to use my healer, healer's kit to just bring him back to stable because uh, he's going to be pretty fucked up, <laughs> especially after the fall. Oh, yeah. Um, and then I'm going to um, just rifle through his pockets, removing any like spell for casting focuses and stuff like that. Do you want to make me an investigation check? Let's see what you find on the druid, hey? And that will be a... I think that's a good place to wrap up for tonight. We'll come back next oh. week with the questioning of the druid. Just 12. 12. Um, you do find around this druid's neck a small piece of red, blood red amber bound by sticks on a thin cord, which you do suspect is probably going to be the the spellcasting focus. And Raph, was that reaction because I said sticks? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. That was my first um, thought too. <laughs> yeah, uh, you watch. Uh, you lose this tiny Blinsky dolls of sticks holding this blood red amber in position. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, <laughs> as you pull on the cord. Um, no, I mean that you suspect is definitely the spellcasting uh, spellcasting focus. The druid also has a few vials on him with insects in them. You can see that there's um, one with two wasps buzzing around the inside of this small vial. That get the sense he probably was going to cast insect. Uh, giant insect on at some point if the need arose Um, and oh sorry you go jacob sorry i was just gonna ask about the gem so finish off where you go all good um the only other thing you find luther as you dig through his pockets is a seed a blood red seed surrounded by vines which as you pick it up you can see this glow very slowly leaving its surface yeah i'm not i'm not gonna touch that with my hand for sure (laughs) That looks nasty. I'm going to wrap that up, and that's going to be a journal thing to figure out. That's pretty fair. <laughs> journal, it looks, See, it looks kind of tasty. I mean, a little nibble could, couldn't hurt, I right? Know. No, no. I'm <laughs> arched, hungry. Oh. No. I Look, think let's if see. that's going on, I would. Um, yeah. We can do an identify now or later. I think we'll other. save that for next session because that'll be part of a larger conversation. I think we'll check in. Jacob, mm-hmm. what were you going to. The, the red gem around its neck. Yeah. Is that different to the red gem that we saw around Damo's neck this morning? Yeah. So this one isn't a gemstone. It's actually a, a section of amber, a piece of, of okay. raw amber that just happens to be blood red uh, wrapped in sticks. But it is, <laughs> but it is, um, it, it's twigs. not a gemstone per se. Yeah, twigs. Thank you. Wrapped in twigs. Yeah. But it looks like a section of, of amber rather than anything else. I mean, as you, as you, rub it with your fingertips or you actually chip a tiny bit off it. Ah. Yeah. it. And then you watch as Tithla's thumb falls off as a result. No, no, no. Ah. It's obviously... You got another one. No, I think... Um, yeah. I think I think that's a good place to wrap up for tonight because we'll come back and I th- I want to have this all kind of be fresh in your minds as we go through the questioning, go through the investigation of the things around. So let's let's wrap it up there for tonight. We'll come back next week and... Explore this Are we a doing bit. Are next next week? 
Uh, that's true. We are doing. Oh god, uh, we are doing an Easter. We are doing the Easter special. That's true. So we will come back and see this in uh, two weeks' time. We will have the resolution of this. Even even more reason to not have this start now. Have a week off and then have you try and remember and and free flowing jump back into the uh, the role play. So no, that's that's a good point. Let's um let's go through that next time. Thank you so much, everybody. It has been wonderful having you here once again. Twitch people, don't go anywhere. We're going to go raid another one of our lovely friends of the channel. It looks like none of our normal friends are up playing D&D, but that's okay. We'll see who else is playing D&D. Let's go raid. Um, let's go raid the Secrets of Stormwreck Isle. That looks like they're having a lot of fun. I want to go raid them. They look like they're, they're having a lot of fun. Decode is the streamer. Yeah, let's go, let's go give them some love. Let's go raid them. Um, if you're watching us on YouTube, make sure you hit that like and subscribe button. Leave a comment below if you liked this homebrew monster, if you want me to chuck it up on uh, D&D Beyond for anyone else to use. The Stone Blights are a stat block that I'll, I'll chuck up if you guys want it. It's all yours. And uh, if you have uh, faced off against the druids of Yesterhiller who've played Curse of Strahd, um, you'll notice this is a little bit different to how it's normally introduced. Let me know what you think. I wanted to kind of do a little bit of different stuff with Curse of Strahd. So we've done, we've made a few kind of like story beat changes to follow the direction the players are kind of taking it. And um, I think this is a really cool way to kind of introduce what's happening at uh, the Wizard of Wines Vineyard when you actually give a shit about the people there <laughs> to begin with, rather than being like, oh yeah, it's a winery and it's all covered in blights. Yeah, don't love blights. And then that's the motivation. <laughs> <laughs> So look, thank you so much, everybody. It's been wonderful having you here. We will be back for our Return of the Giants campaign on Wednesday. And most excitingly of all, we will have our first session, our session zero of our Kyoshi era Avatar Legends session next Thursday. So I am very pleased to announce that. It's going to be lots and lots of fun. Make sure you come and join us. But for now, that is all. There is no more. Stay safe, stay well, and we will see you all again next time. But until then, Farewell, everybody. Goodbye. Bye. Bye. See you, everyone. Bye.